Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That's right. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Nick Mason. Movies continue to be back. They and do, it's great for they? me to be back also. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, for now. I mean, for one now, of the, yeah. One of the big bits of news we're going to be doing, we're going to talk more potential delays, Mason. Oh, no. Because of those gosh darn writers and actors who can't get it together. Dang it. <laughs> just, guys, guys. Just think about what you're doing. Just work for a pittance like the rest of us, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. God. Uh, there's time codes below if we want to jump to anything in particular. So we're going to get into that up top. Uh, including one big megastar who's contributed to the campaign. That's right. You may have heard about. Uh, now, Barbie is big. We're going to talk about that. That's right. That's undeniable. And the knock-on effect of that. Mm. Bad. <laughs> no. We'll talk about why. Hollywood's taking the wrong lesson. That can't be true. <laughs> That's true. Oh, man. Dungeons and Dragons sequel, potentially. Maybe. Um, we're going to talk about the Lando TV series. Oh, yeah, that's just, been in limbo for a while. It's probably maybe happening, though, Land- this time. Lando be in limbo. Yeah. And then we're going to get into The Flash. Well, just a, just a little bit of an update. I like the Flash, the movie. Yeah. That, that, to be clear, has been and gone. Oh, yeah. No, I was going to say because I think it's supposed to be coming out soon. But you're right, it did come out already. Yeah, it's, on, uh, it's, on, it's, it's come out at theatres <laughs> yep. and it's come out on streaming. That's right, I did watch yeah. it, I did watch it. Then we're going to talk both Secret Invasion and then the horror, the horror smash hit, the sleeper hit, Mason, talk to the hand. <laughs> That's right. Because uh, the ghosts ain't listening. Oh, they are listening. They are very much listening. Yeah. Uh, the Australian horror movie, Talk to Me. Talk to Me, Which yeah. uh, is out in Australia and I think it's out in America. Next week, is Next it? week or uh, next couple of days, I well, think. it's not. Or it might be out now. Oh, but uh, it's being distributed through A24. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so it's going to get a worldwide release and that's pretty exciting. Talk about how that, all that happened as well because it's pretty cool. Uh, July 28th, yeah, so it should be out. Yeah. Good. Good. So Good. we're talking about a movie that people might have had the chance to see, Mason. Terrific. All right. Potential delays. <laughs> what? Rubbing your hands with glee. No, this is rubbing mm. my hands with concern. I don't know. Your face doesn't say concern. <laughs> oh, I'm so your concerned. Face has, your face has cashed a big check from those fat cats <laughs> down at Hollywood Boulevard, <laughs> which is where the Hollywood... That's where they cut the checks. Out at Hollywood Boulevard, yeah. That's right, yeah, yeah. Down at Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> So Warner Brothers are considering, we talked about this. You got your check from Hello Dolly. That's right. She writes the checks. No doubt. Mm. I think we talked about this one last week, but Warner Brothers. West Side Story? I don't know. I haven't seen West Side Story or Hello Dolly. No, I did see a school production of West Side Story once. That's great. All white kids. Mm. Horrendous. Yeah, no, I, yeah. But I loved it. That's great. (laughs) Because it was horrendous? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Warner Brothers are considering a 2024 June release date. Um, I think we talked about this last week, but apparently what they're waiting for. A Dune release date. Dune 2. For Dune 2. For so Dune not two. twenty, not, not the year 2024, a Dune release date. No, a Dune 2024 release date. Or Dune Part Dune. For Dune Part 2. Okay. I don't know whether it's going to be in Dune or not. Mm. But uh, I'd say it could be a summer release. Oh. Like absolutely if they have to push it back. One of the problems this year it seems also I feel like with blockbuster movies is that it was just back to back to back to back to back and people went, we don't want to see most of these. Mm. This is too many movies. Yeah. And so if they are going to push everything, it's just going to happen again next year. That's no, true. <laughs> so that's fun. Yeah. But they're going to wait until apparently December to make that decision. Now, IMAX CEO Richard Gelfond, he said that IMAX must honour its commitment to Warner Brothers and screen Dune Part 2. <laughs> but you must honour your commitments. <laughs> He's taking a leaf out of... Uh... The Houses of Dune. I oh, no doubt, yeah. yeah. Uh, but if that falls through, apparently they've got uh, the Marvels lined up okay. to take the IMAX spot, bearing in mind that wasn't filmed in IMAX. Okay, so it'll just be bigger. Yeah. It'll and be a bit bigger and you can look at it at a different angle. That's right. Great. Right. And, and, and um, so, yeah, it's not shot for IMAX and if Dune 2 does come out, then that won't happen. Great, okay. Okay, sure. so there's that. But Bloomberg <laughs> is saying that Disney... <laughs> I want to watch Dune 2. We've got Dune 2 at the IMAX. It's the Marvels. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, this is completely different. <laughs> but Bloomberg is saying Disney are considering delaying the Marvels until next year. Uh, not because it's not finished, because it pretty much is, but there's going to be because of the no promo situation. We talked right, about course, last yeah. week, but mm-hmm. one of the things that can't be done is if you're associated with the movie, you're an actor or writer, you can't do press for it. That's right. And I feel like that movie, like the charm of it, and there's going to be like 
the three of them sitting in interviews and being like, we had, we had fun and we're having fun yeah, yeah. in this interview, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're eating yeah. hot ones together. Mm. We're beating up Sean Evans together. That's exactly the right. three of us. Yeah. You know? Having... And they would, wouldn't they? They would. They would. They wouldn't even answer any of his questions. <laughs> they have a hot sauce in his eyes because <laughs> they're mean. Mm. So that makes total sense to me. I don't mm. think – I mean, that movie needs that campaign, I mm. feel. I don't know anybody who knows that even exists. So, mm. you know, no, anybody in the real world, I should that's say. That's true, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's fun. Uh, but also, so Puck Newsletter is saying, uh, Matt Baloney, who writes that, said that. Matt Baloney. Matt, sorry, Baloney said, uh, okay. shift, uh, said that it's going to. Oh, not, this his, is, not his evil twin, Matt Baloney. No. <laughs> who only tells lies. <laughs> so this is Deadpool 3 news. I've got to put it in oh. step. I'm rem- remembering now. Okay. So remember, do you remember that went from November next year and they moved it up mm. to May? Because they're confident. like, we're ready and we're confident. Yeah, 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 well, because yeah. that movie now has shut down production, there's a good chance that that's going to shift from the May yeah, right. slot again, which makes sense mm. because they, they can't, can't, they cannot be finishing it. None of these parties, and when I say none of them, I mean the studio's even now are just not coming to the table. So They're still like, like, let's see what happens here. But now we've got support from uh, from characters, from real-life characters, <laughs> oh, yes. real larrikins. One of the biggest characters there is. That's right, physically and emotionally. Mm. Uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he made the largest single donation to the SAG Afro Foundation, according to its president and executive director. Apparently this was a seven-figure donation. So f- from a million dollars... To nine, nine million nine hundred ninety-nine thousand. No, nine, nine million dollars. That's the that's the biggest number okay, you could do. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just so you know. Okay. Sure. 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 Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so look, that's great. I mean, he doesn't have to do that. Like he's a PR machine. No doubt they crunched the the zeros and ones and whatever. And thought, how is this going to affect? They crunched my... the zeros and ones. The zeros and ones. Okay, all right. cr- I know numbers. I yeah. thought I proved that Name already. Another number other than zero and one. Why do I need to prove anything? I would just like you to. Did Einstein need to prove anything? No, he just said things, and that was true. Oh, that's true. And that's isn't the it? same thing that's happening here. <laughs> so you're putting yourself at the same level as an Einstein. Yeah, yeah. I okay, mean, obviously, good. he's working off like outdated, like. Yeah. Techniques and numbers and equations. Mm. I'm in the I'm in the modern realm, so if anything, I've probably I've built off what he's done. That's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if he saw a laptop, he'd explode. Yep. You know, good. Yeah. I wouldn't look at me now. You're looking at it. I can look almost directly at it. The steam's coming out of your ears, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so you know, maybe this is could be a PR move. This could just be like. I don't know, he got screwed recently on a number of projects by producers. Maybe it's a tax dodge. Maybe it's a tax dodge. To me, it doesn't matter. No, it's right. You could be an absolute fucking ghoul in your heart, but if you are doing good things, that is what counts. I'm not saying he is that. He yeah, seems yeah, yeah. very nice. Uh-huh. So- <laughs> Who out there, though, is an absolute ghoul in their heart but keeps doing good things, though? I'd love to know. Are they cursed or if something? If you're a ghoul in your heart, yeah. let us know. Mm. Yeah. I mean, uh, this also may be – and uh, look, I'd, ca- I'd come in here today to uh, to provide a little bit of slightly outdated news, but yeah. news nonetheless that we didn't cover in the last couple of weeks, mm. to just absolutely roast Dwayne The Rock Johnson – and he's come out and donated a, a, a one to nine million dollars <laughs> to the SAG after a uh, fund. Yeah, uh, because he has taken a fifty million dollar paycheck for his movie Red One. Yes, which you would think is a sequel to Red Notice, but it is not. No, it's the one where he's Santa or something. <laughs> yeah, but he's military Santa. And Chris Evans is there. Yeah, they also sort of did a version of that Arthur Christmas. Do you remember that? No, it's like military Santa kind oh, of or whatever. Okay. They did Santa uh, with yeah. muscles, of course. Yeah. So this isn't even first wrestler Christmas. It, no. <laughs> He wouldn't have got that fifty million now, though. Like this is before Black Adam, and you know a few oh, recent right, projects. Okay. Maybe because I only learned this recently. Yeah, the fifty million dollar. Yeah, movie. no, I'm saying that. I mean, that movie is filmed. Like that would have been yeah. negotiated like two yeah, years yeah. ago. Also, I think it's his production company. So sure, sure. Seven <laughs> Buck Productions. Whatever yeah, yeah, it's that's called. right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So that's, much, that's how many taxes? How much taxes he's paying on the? 50 and how many million figures dollars. he's given away? That's right. Seven Buck. Yeah. Million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's you know. And how do you feel about that fifty million dollars? It's fucking lunacy. It is Obviously. lunacy, yeah. It is absolutely lunacy. Obviously, but also, like, if they're paying other people, mm. they're not. Right. But if they were, I yeah. don't care. Like, I've said this before, like, if a CEO earns $32 million, that's obviously lunacy. But if everybody else is being paid mm. what they what they deserve, and I don't mean, like, they made something bad so they don't get oh, yeah. paid. I mean they yeah. get paid a wage yeah, right, which right, is right. reflective of the work and the industry yeah. that they are in, mm. then I don't care. Earn yeah. as much as you want. I just think it's an interesting that, like, 
Do you think he did it on purpose? <laughs> what, paid himself $50 million? No, no, no. Like after the $50 million came out, he gave him a, a one to $9 million. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, just, I just think it's really interesting that he's convinced the backers of this movie to be like, you, you should sign off on this. Mm. This is going to reap dividends, me getting paid $50 million for it's this. not. No. <laughs> it's I'm probably, not. like, honestly, I'm not going to watch it. No. Let's be real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. I might because my kids will, might I'll be like, here's Chris, it's Christmas. Yeah, here's the biggest man you've ever seen yeah. at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't behave, he will come down the chimney. Yeah. He will rip a chimney into our roof because yep. we don't have a chimney and he'll come down and he'll beat you up. And if you further don't behave, we will be watching Santa with Muscles. That's right. Starring another very big man. Mm. So that's fun. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of big, Mason. Go on. Barbie is big. Barbie's big. It's crossed half a billion dollars. Easily, yeah. Beyond mm. that now, mm. um, and you know what that means? What's that? It's franchise time. Oh, <laughs> come on! <laughs> you knew it was franchise time. Oh yeah, I guess. I don't want to be franchise time. You were playing coy. You knew. <sighs> it's. I mean, it's. I mean, it's five hundred million dollars. How, how long's it been? A week and a bit. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, and it did it quicker than that. Yeah, yeah that's so, amazing. Yeah, yeah it will. I mean, it will probably end up bigger than Mario. It depends. Mm. Obviously, I think it will. But yeah, at this point, it's. It's in the green. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're even saying that this will make enough money where it will compensate for what The Flash did. Wow. And that's something saying, else. That is saying something, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that, movie took a, that movie took 15 years to make yeah. and then made no money. That's right. And so uh, we have talked in, in recent weeks about how Mattel, owners of Barbie, have yep. a bunch of other IP. We named 45 properties. That's right. Uh, in, in, in the works. And they're like, we can definitely turn these into viable movies. And they are. So a few of these were already in development, mm. but we had uh, Mattel's film executive, Robbie Brenner. Yeah. She was speaking of Variety and just giving a few quotes on all these things. That mm. these are uh, these are a handful that look to be moving forward. Yeah, right. So, and I'm, I got, I got, I got. I'm going to tell you what they are. Uh-huh. I'm going to tell you who's in them. Okay. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a quote. I love that. I do, I do my research. Oh yeah. Yeah. Not on everything. No. I wing most of it, but this <laughs> this thing I really locked into. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that was Einstein all the way, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, maybe we have different methods. Obviously, yeah. I use a more modern method. I th- mm. I probably think about things a little bit more than he did, <laughs> you know? Yeah, he was yeah. flying by the seat of his pants. I'm more methodical and my hair's, like, not as ridiculous. What are you doing? Run a comb through it. Mason. Yes? Rock them, sock them robots. Oh, yes. Go on. Uh, do you know who's linked to this? Richard Linklater. Great question. Yes. Oh, sorry, that wasn't a question. It was a question of sorts. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Uh, it was. It's Vin Diesel. Okay. And Robbie Brenner said, Vin is excited. Mm-hmm, sure. uh, we're working on developing a script and we're all very excited about it. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think that's from 2021 that was that's, announced. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. Like uh, that. We talked about this. JJ- all right, first of all, rock and sock. <laughs> Again, like, and look, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna run through these as if any of them matter. Mm. But, like, who's, who's got fond memories of rock and sock and robots? Nobody. Nobody, right? I don't think I've ever used one. Sure. But even in America, though, yeah, you know, it's just you, they smash into each other until I their know head the pops joke off. from that's, Toy Story. Yeah, like yeah. That's when did they even come out? I would say the sixties. Yeah, it's also no like like video games do this, but yeah. like with combos, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can tear the other person's head well, exactly. off. Exactly, and, and like the thing about nineteen sixty four. There we go. The thing about Barbies is that you can they exist. Everywhere, and you put them on. You know, you can. They go on adventures. Yeah, this is all like a red guy and a blue guy in a little, in a little, <laughs> tiny little arena. That's it. Yep. There's no. Where's the imagination there? I guess you could. You and your, your your siblings could imagine like a incredible rivalry between the two. Rock them, sock. Yeah, but you can't even like take them off and like. That's true. Yeah. Go on little adventures and yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's run across the kitchen countertop. Let's kick the hummus onto the floor. That's you know right. that game we play. Yes, as that's, children. That's right. And now. And now. Yeah. So you know that's mm. cool. So it's very exciting, apparently. Does that mean they're probably listening to podcasts and YouTube videos and scouring, desperately scouring for ideas? So it wouldn't shock me if they were kicking the hummus off at the <laughs> table in the movie. I mean, again, people have talked about this. We got to clean up that hummus. <laughs> it's Vin Diesel. I mean, like real steel was that. It was, yeah. So, like, is Vin Diesel going to be a rock them sock them robot? Is he going to be one of the people behind it? That's like, a great what is question. it? I mean, it's going to be like. Bloodshot and whatever. It's going to be a weird vanity project. And, yeah, I reckon you know? it's, it's going to be real steel. And I think it's a he's the pilot of a rock them, sock them robot. But he has to get in it? No, I think you, you connect your brain to it or something. It's boring. They did that. Yeah, I know they did that. 
Is that what Real Steel was about? I don't know. It was, mm. That was more AI. And then and the robot came alive. And then he, think, yeah. No, but it sort of did. And Hugh Jackman then ended up okay. doing the fighting. Right. Yeah, because he was a former boxer. Because people didn't want to watch boxing anymore. They wanted to watch robot boxing. Mm. And I just don't think people will ever lose that desire to see someone, like, kill another person. Right. I just don't see that going out of fashion. Sure, 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 you know? sure. It's been, it's been popular forever. Mm. You don't, you don't want to see two dishwashers smash into each other? A mm, little bit, sure. Yeah. But, you know, for how long? That's true. Yeah. Also, that's the plot of my movie. <laughs> Rock them, sock them, dishwashers? It's the sequel to We Bought a Zoo. It's called We Tied <laughs> Two Dishwashers to Ropes Hanging from the Ceiling and Smashed Them Together. I mean, it's cheaper than a zoo. Yeah, it really is. You can really do it anywhere where, you you know, you've got a roof. <laughs> uh, JJ Abrams' Hot Wheels, we talked yeah. about this. Here's a quote. Real characters that you can relate to that are three-dimensional, that have an, that have emotional journeys. It's none of those As things. As I was saying that, I forgot what property we were talking about Yeah, because it's so vague and nothing. Because, what? sure, you can put in real characters and emotional blah to be blah, yeah. but then you don't need the Hot Wheels. Don't you think it would be like, I mean, I know because he already does those movies, but like Vin Diesel does Hot Wheels and maybe he's like a little toy man and it's kind of Toy Story. I mean, that's nothing either. Yeah. But like... What do we anyway? Look, what's and we look. We know what's going to happen is they're going to do a couple of these, and people will go. We just want Barbie too. Yeah, we just want Barbie. We don't like these because we don't connect with them. Yeah, and they'll stop doing it. So. Yep. But it's yeah. it's lovely to share this 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 uh, have this shared fantasy all together. We it. think these are going to keep these this are collective gonna... delusion. Yeah, yeah that's having. right. Yeah, uh, Barney with Daniel Kaluuya. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said I saw this being compared to being John Malkovich and another Spike Jones film that I've forgotten. But sure, just, okay, just the Three Kings. Yeah, Three Kings. That's right. <laughs> did, he re- did he direct that or is he in it? I think he's just in it. Yeah, he's just in it. Yeah, I think. okay. So here's the quote. Any movie that, that has Barney is certainly not going to be straightforward. Oh. We're not talking Ted. You know what I mean? No. No, we don't. No. <laughs> no. So I, they've also compared it to like an A24 kind of horror-ish kind of situation. Uh-huh. This is my favorite and this is the most obviously. Oh, they compared it to. They were like this. They were like Barney's going to be like being John Malkovich, an adaptation. Two movies that are like what? famously high concept and highbrow and probably didn't do that well and financially. And those are they're different. They are movies. very different. You're absolutely right. <laughs> do you think they want Spike Jones to get in on this? Do you think they want him to do it? That's wild. Do they, I guess they mean tonally? I don't know, man. Also, we talked about this, didn't we? Death's the Smoochie. That yeah. was like a Barney-esque kind exactly, of yeah. dark that's and the best. That's the best example you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, this one, this one's very Barbie adjacent. It's Polly Pocket, uh, directed by Lena Dunham with Lily Collins. Okay, yeah. Uh, Lena Dunham from Girls. She mm-hmm. recently did the movie Birdie, which is apparently quite good. Okay. Uh, with Bella Ramsey and Lily Collins is Emily in Paris. That's right. And Phil Collins' daughter. Mm. Uh, here's the quote. It's been an amazing collaboration. Lena is so collaborative and rolls up her sleeves and really likes to roll around in notes and listen. And muck. <laughs> she loves to roll around in <laughs> Lily, muck. Lily is so smart and so specific and so productorial, and hopefully we'll be making that at some point in the future. Great. <laughs> bargain, I'm, I'll say it, Bargain Basement Barbie is what that is. Yep. I don't know what – it's the – You, you it's open it, it's a little clown show. Little, little, little house. Little house. Yeah, 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 okay, right, yeah okay. can't wait. Um, was there a boys' version of that as well? Mighty Max. Mighty Max, there we go. Like there's, you know, you open up a snake's head and Mighty Max is like, I'm in a snake dungeon. Nice. No? My brother had a couple. Yeah, right. Yeah. But as I said, mm-hmm. the only thing people really want to see is Barbie 2. Yes. And Warner Brothers should know that. Mm. But they should also know that there's a slight wrinkle in this Go on. Uh, because of Greta Gerwig who directed that and co-wrote. She said, at this moment, it's all I've got. I feel like that at the end of every movie, like I'll never have another idea and everything I've ever wanted to do, I did. I wouldn't want to squash anybody else's dream, but for me at this moment, I'm at totally zero. Huh. Now, I think money obviously talks in a situation like this. Mm. She's also doing some Narnia movies for Netflix. That's true. But, you know, Netflix could like easily like drag her away from that if That's they true. really not – Netflix, not Netflix, Warner Brothers easily mm. could get that momentum going and, yeah. and whatever. But look, if she can't do it, Plenty of people could suffer. Exactly, in. yeah. Brett Ratner, mm-hmm. Joss Whedon. McGee. McGee could do it. What's yeah. he mean? He's probably free. It's definitely Waiting free. by the phone, by the pool, you know? Give him a chance. Yeah, right? Give him a chance. 
Um, he did a Charlie's Angels movie or two. He did you know, one or two. That, they were empowering to women. He did a Terminator movie. Yes, that's right. One of them. Mm. I didn't like it. Some people do. So, look, there we go. That's where we're at. I mean, Barbie 2 is, like, inevitable. Mm. Um, that would be, like, crazy not to approach that. But I, I did feel that, like, at the end of Barbie. I'm like, this is, like, a whole thing. Yeah. You know? But that's the reason. <laughs> This is the dilemma we find ourselves in every single time. Is that if every some, week, Mason? Is that if somebody crafts a good story with a defined beginning, middle, and end, and we enjoy it because it's good, we're like, I'd like to see another one of those. Mm. But if they make one that is just Easter eggs and you know point to the the sequel because they haven't made a proper movie, <laughs> we go, I'm not interested. You know? <laughs> wow. So you know, it's a real catch. You get you get you caught. Yeah, it's the deadliest catch. <laughs> Thank you. You are not wrong. <laughs> So yeah, we uh, we would like a sequel, but that's the maybe don't. Yeah, they will. No, they will. They'll get yeah. Brett Ratner. Yeah, they should. Yeah, <laughs> Michael Bay. Yeah, Spike Jones. Yeah, yeah. These are all good. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, the guy that does all the um, Liam Neeson Taken sequels, all the director video stuff. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know who that is. No, nobody does. <laughs> maybe there isn't a guy. Yeah, I don't think there is a guy. <laughs> Maybe it's just Liam Neeson shows up on set and maybe there's some guys there and he's like, what if I what if I turn and I kick and yeah. whatever? Uh, yeah, to put on the leather jacket. I'm already wearing a leather jacket. Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of sequels, though, here's something I would actually like to see. Mm. And also, I'd see a Barbie too. Of course yeah. I would. I really like that first mm. movie. That first and probably not only movie. That's right. So D&D sequels, yes. Mason. Mm-hmm. Now that movie, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Amongst Thieves, yes. didn't do well. Did not do well at all. I think all. it's doing better on streaming. Okay. Everybody likes it though. Mm. Even Claire watched it on the plane back from overseas. Oh, yes. And she's like, that was fucking great. She said, I like your stupid Dungeons and Dragons thing. And I said, I had nothing to do with that, but thank you. <laughs> it just, She <laughs> said it just seemed like something you'd have to be involved with because it's stupid. A big Hollywood production. That's right. It does seem like something I would be mm. involved in. Uh, but anyway, CEO uh, Brian Robbins, who, I don't know, he's, who knows which, he's at A Company. Is, is it that, Paramount? Is, is it, it, is it the one that's doing Ninja Turtles? Because there was a recently I saw a cover, it was like Variety or something. Oh, maybe and he's Paramount. on the cover of it with the Ninja Turtles. He used to direct things, I think. Okay. He was a director before he was the head of this. Oh, he, made, he did A Thousand Words. He did Meet Dave. Oh, he did Meet Dave. He did Norbert, apparently. He did Norbert, there we go. The, one of the dudes behind Norbert. Now he's the head of Paramount or something. <laughs> I think that's cool. I agree. Yeah, you're right. He, mm. No, he's, he's directed a bunch of movies. He did Varsity Blues. Oh. That's the one people enjoy, I think. Um, so, yeah, basically said uh, we've got to figure out a way to make it for less. Yes. So not off the table. But mm. I would argue mm-hmm. this is never going to happen. No, you can't really make it for much less, no. I don't think. Yeah. Unless it's just. In a dungeon. It might be in a dungeon. I mean, if they did. And look, and the, the guys behind it, what John Francis Daly yeah. and the other guy, I mean, they feel like they have enough creative bones in their body that they could do a. A, a clever 100%. take on it, but are, is anybody actually going to give them the money? Yeah. Again, we've hit the dilemma where if they go, okay, what about the movie is we get all the cast back and they're just people in real life and they're having a, like a regular time of it and they do a little adventure on it and then we see it play out in little vignettes or something like that. That's not, like, like that, that could be interesting. Yeah. But if you've pitched that to movie theatres, uh, to, to the movie studio, they'll be like, we're not making that. No. It's for less. Well, we're still not making it. Yeah. Because where's the action? Well, the action would cost $200 million. Mm. Well, we're not going to give you that. No, absolutely no. not. And we're not going to give you less money for a smaller idea. Also, like the cast alone. Mm. Like- we'll give you a small amount of money for you to make a bigger movie that will do better. Can you do that? <laughs> no? Interesting. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thanks for nothing, yeah. I guess. Yeah, bye. Yeah. So there you go. But there is a TV series in the works, apparently. Well, we'll see that one. We'll yeah. This is via Above the Line. So Donald Glover. And his brother Stephen Glover apparently will write the Disney Lando series. Oh. They are on board together, uh, which is cool. Apparently this has been locked in place for a while. Okay. The writer strike has obviously right. put this on hold. So this is the first bit of news we've had about this in like two years. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, I like that combination. Yeah. Has Stephen Glover done writing before? Did I, he write on Atlanta I think he or something? did write on Atlanta, but I don't know that. He could just be like a, a good, a fun guy. I mean, are you implying that maybe – He's nepotism. never done anything and this is nepotism. Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
That's right. We can't rule it out. No, and yeah, he, co- he, co- he co-wrote Atlanta. There it is. So there okay. you go. How do you feel about that? I love that. I bet you're embarrassed now because you said, I mean, maybe he was hired for that because of nepotism, but it turns out that show was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's so right. So it turns out your concerns oh, were unfounded. I should have accused him of nepotism like four or five years ago. Damn you're it. late. You're late, Mason. Damn, I look like but then you would have had to walk it back. That's true, yeah. It's good to get it all done here, you know? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. So there you go. How do you feel about that? Young love Lando. Love it. I, me too. Yeah. I liked his Lando. That mm. movie's fine. But uh, there's some good elements to it, yeah. including him. Oh, and we can give a Han Solo. I mean, I'll deny him. Just, he's back, he's, baby. Well, he's proven himself yeah, again and right. again. He's great. And you know what? People would cheer because he's been in a previous Star Wars thing, yep. even though nobody liked it. No, people liked I it. I know, but most – Nobody saw it. Yeah, nobody saw it. And the, the people who hate everything in Star Wars hated that. And But if, they, if he shows up in this, they'll cheer because they've been conditioned to like it. I'll cheer. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, Disney TV at the moment is just on point. I agree. I mean, we're going to talk about one. Everyone a banger. <laughs> so now we've got uh, one more bit when of news. We, when we do that, remind me, I'm going to do a list of Marvel stuff that I'm still excited is coming out. Okay. So I'm excited. Including some Marvel TV. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's me too sometimes. Right, great, great. Uh, now we're going to talk about The Flash just quickly. Yes. It has rocketed. To the top of the rental charts. Has it, really? How do you feel about that? Insanity, all right. <laughs> but, you, I, you know. It's new. It and, is new, that's And, you true. know, you see it on your rental thing and you see a picture of Batman, you're like, oh, yeah. New Batman thing, all right. Yeah, but the flat, all right. All right. Oh, I watched that. I don't know. But you already bought it. Yeah, that's right. Some people love it. Mm. Sometimes you, you, you rent it and it's like, you start it, it's like, you got 48 hours to finish this. And you watch for a bit of it and you're like, Maybe I won't have time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll be doing something else. i got some laundry to do. Exactly. Maybe I won't. <laughs> Maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. No, I saw some. I'll fold, I'll fold laundry and watch something. Yeah, right. I'll okay. do that. I hate laundry, Mason. Wow. I hate it. I wish I had a laundry guy. All right. You got those washing machines? Do I have washing machines? No, it's washing machines. You know, you were going to hang them to the roof and clack, crack oh, them into each other. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, you can borrow them. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Imagine you drag it up here from your car, <laughs> like the safe from Fast and Yeah, Furious. one rope each. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so Andy Machete and producer Barbara, uh, Barbara Machete, they talked about uh, a little bit of information mm-hmm. concerning why Keaton's Batman stopped being Batman. Now, look, I don't like oh, a lot yeah. of things about that mm-hmm. movie, but I think their Keaton Batman was on point. Mm-hmm. I thought Keaton was very good, yep. and I like this. Okay. So. He said, I, I always said something should have happened to Bruce Wayne to want him to stop being Batman. And my idea was that he did something that goes against his code. He killed a criminal in front of his child unknowingly, but he still did it, which is basically the thing that happened to him, obviously. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And look, most versions of Batman, I would say there is no way Batman would do that. Uh-huh. But this one, mm, absolutely. That's right. He's probably done it more times than he knows. I stuck a dynamite in the back of the man's <laughs> pants and blew his genitals out the front. Yep. And his kid was there. It was bring your kid to weird clown riot day. That's right. And I feel some regret for that. <laughs> but didn't he also say in the movie that the reason he stopped being Batman is Gotham said stopped, stopped doing crime or whatever? Yeah, but maybe they because he murdered everyone. Yeah, probably. Yeah. That would that would do it, wouldn't it? Mm. So there you go. Okay. Just a little bit of fun flash yeah, news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have we had any updates on whether Andy Machete is still directing Batman the Brave and the Bold? All we know is that it was announced. Cur- currently still happening. What else do you want to know? Well, that's it, I think. Yeah. I mean, people have said, I see people saying, oh, you know, he made this movie and everybody hates it and it didn't do well, et cetera. Why does he get a, yeah. a Batman and the Brave and the Bold movie? But I think it's – the thing about it is that it was a movie that was in production for – yeah. Since when was it? 2014 or something? Something like that. Something yeah. like, like So nearly 10 years. Yeah. And it went through a bunch of writers and a bunch of directors yep. and producers and whatever, and he made it. Yeah. Like he succeeded in complete – for whatever yeah. reason, they had to make this one. Yep. And he did it. And I think it's like it's – I mean, and it was – we talked – like it was clearly a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just beginning to end. And I think, you know, we often talk about, you know, when it comes to actors or directors, you know, the the idea of one for them, one for me. Yeah. You do a You do a big blockbuster that makes a billion dollars that you don't – you're not connected to emotionally. Mm. So that when you go to the studios and say, hey, can I make something more personal to me? They go, mm, we don't like it, but you're the billion dollar yeah. guy, whatever. I think it's in the similar vein. It's – they probably said, listen – you're going to finish this. If you finish this, yeah. everybody's going to hate you. <laughs> this is the one for us mm. and it's not going to do well and it's a black mark against your record, but in exchange we'll let you do a Batman. Give you a Batman movie. And give that a, a shot. Also, so they're really going to have to we ramp. might not give you a Batman That's movie. That's true, yeah. <laughs> and also 
we might not promote it and it might <laughs> make $30 million. <laughs> it might be the first Batman movie to make $30 million. Does, does The Flash count as the first Batman movie to make not a lot of money? I mean, I mean, you could say like the serials in the 60s one, but... Oh, yeah. No. I mean, it, it, I guess not. It's a Flash movie. Yep. So, nice. Yeah. Got him on a technicality. That's right. That's right. Anyway. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, anyway. So Secret Invasion is wrapped up. Mm-hmm. We weren't going to talk about it because... Well, no, no, I'll stop you there. Okay. Secret Invasion came out yep. and then it ran for six weeks and then it wrapped up. Okay, For sure. people who don't know it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay, some people may have missed it entirely. That's good to know, actually. Thank mm, yeah, you for yeah, the yeah. clarification. Now, we were like, are we going to talk about this? Mm. I just didn't feel it was like... I didn't really have anything I had to say about it mm. until the final episode. That's and right. And now I have... Some things to say about it, Mason. We had we both had zero interest, yep. and then I was I saw some clips on the internet of final episode of Secret Invasion, and I watched it, and I texted you, and I said, "Should we watch Secret Invasion?" And you said, "You've already watched it." I've so, already watched so it. So we independently <laughs> came to the conclusion we should. We should In case watch you were it. wondering yes. how we got here, that's right. Now, what I think is really interesting about uh, the way that this is wrapped up is people fucking hate this. Oh yes, like people have joined hands across all spectrums of the internet, that's Mason. Right. You know, any fandom, whatever, whatever, wherever you are, wherever you sit. That's right. And everybody hates this. You can't even, you can't point to anybody at other fandom and go, you hate this and you're an idiot. James, if I could once, if I could correct I you mean, once again, mm. uh, this uh, officially 18% of the world uh, likes this, the final episode. Oh, you're talking. The, the Rotten Tomatoes score is 18%. That is official. Uh, so, so, which is, you know, uh, 18 reviewers out of 100 thought that this was yeah. be- be- more good than bad. Uh, but also that's the lowest rating for a Marvel thing, thing ever, ever, I think. Yeah. yeah. What I find fascinating about this is like, look, I don't need a, a direct adaptation of anything. This oh, is sure. obviously Secret Invasion in name only. The comic is, it, it takes all the superheroes that you know and some mm. of them have been scrolls for years and whatever mm. and it's this whole intriguing plot of whatever. Have yeah, I yeah. read it maybe at some point? I can't remember. <laughs> like I don't, I don't need that necessarily. Yes, sure. sure uh-huh. I'll take whatever they've kind of set up in this universe. Mm, which is not much. Which is not much. But, I mean, and when you look who's in it, Sam Jackson, Ben Mendo Mendelsohn. Olivia and, Coleman. Olivia Coleman. Um, Amelia, Amelia Clark. Clark. Martin Freeman's back. Don Cheadle. You look at the trailers and you know, they're like, you know, this is going to be like the Winter Soldier and whatever. And blah, it's going to be Marvel's blah. Andor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then you get this. Mm. Like, what has happened? Yeah. And we'll talk about maybe potentially why, but... How did, how did that – god damn. And it cost $200 plus million. And it cost $200 plus million. Well, also the reason for that is because they reshot it for four months. I see. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of time. Yeah, they need, they said we need this to be greyer. Yeah. We need, need more wandering around the streets of Russia. Mm-hmm. We need it from every conceivable angle. Actually, we need, we, we need it. We need we need we uh, need Sam Jackson wandering around some green boxes, <laughs> and then we'll try several hundred variations of uh, yep. visual effects versions of Russia. And yeah, we'll, and then just pick whatever. Yeah, yeah, just pick whatever. Yeah. So we're gonna do full spoilers yeah, for uh-huh. this because, like, what are we even doing here? Mm. What are you, What are your thoughts? Okay, so <laughs> so for people who aren't caught up on the scrolls in the MCU, so. Yeah. Uh, in the movie Captain Marvel, of course, yep. uh, they show up. They're refugees from from outer space. And uh, and at the end of that movie, and it turns out that you know that we we think they're bad, but actually they're good. And at the end of that movie, uh, Nick Fury says, "As sure as it's 1995, and this is the end of the movie, Captain Marvel, I will find you another home out in space. I'm going to get in my spaceship and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to scout about and I'm going to find you a new home for all the Skrulls to live on." Yep. And then he didn't do anything. Yeah. For like for a lot. Well, what he did is he had a look around. According to the final episode, mm-hmm. he he had a look around for a bit, and then he. Got didn't tired. find anything. He got, he, got, he got quite tired. He probably had some leaves saved up. Oh my god, yes, please. And then and he, he got tired of pretending to be on a beach in that yep. little simulator, and he's decided to be on a real beach. Sure. So he couldn't find anything. So he just gave up. And and he said, but of course, he said, in exchange for me looking around for another planet for you, if you could be my secret soldiers on Earth, kind of thing. Yeah. And he's like, so I I didn't keep up my end of the bargain, but I kept these guys on the leash and et cetera. But what I think really happened is he just, you know, you know how sometimes you have like a thing on your to-do list and it takes, you like, and you just, you sweat about it for ages yeah. and then you finally do it. You know, you, you put it I off a week. Sort of, said I got a replace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you put it off a week. I weeks. do actually. That's a real thing. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I'll remind you after. It doesn't matter. Great. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but then you finally do the thing and it takes five minutes. And you're like, oh, what did I wait till? Yeah. I think it's this. He could have just made a phone call and be like, listen, guys, I, I couldn't find a place. Also, like a bunch of Avengers stuff did kick off. That's true. I Every- mean, that was 13 years after the scroll thing. <laughs> That's right, yeah. But still. Yeah. So at the start of this. I don't uh, know. I wouldn't do anything if a cat scratched my eye out. Yeah. I don't think I'd do a damn thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, use your sp- scroll science to give me a new eye. Yeah. Then I'll, then I'll, then I'll put my skates on, all right? <laughs> but anyway, at the start of Secret Invasion, there is a, there is a resistance movement or a, or, a, or a dissenting movement of Skrulls who are really kind of mad that uh, Fury hasn't done anything for them, but, but, but he, you know, they, he's still put, taking him on military missions and et cetera. And so they're going to get up to some stuff. They're going to cause a ruckus on Earth. Yeah, man. Blow some stuff up and, you yeah. know, have a grand old time. Exactly. And Fury's got to stop them. He's got to stop them because this is yet again another Marvel story. Where the, where the villains are a bunch of refugees looking for a home because their planet has been torn apart, uh-huh. but they also just do big murders for no reason. That's right, so yes. they're the bad guys. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> and what does that say? Nothing essentially. <laughs> yeah, there's no political statement. No, not really. Event of any, I mean, of any real note. That's right. Yeah. Which is kind of a, a wild take mm. to kind of. And there's not a really political <laughs> statement or really anything. That yeah, happens exactly. In this series. What's so wild about this is that. No Skrull reveal in this of like this person's a Skrull and whatever. Yeah. I there was literally no interest or intrigue at any point. No. Whenever anybody was revealed or not revealed mm. to be anything. So I mean and there's two problems with this. One is that, you know, in a real world sense, you couldn't reveal any of the main big heroes to have always been scrolls because they're too expensive. You yeah. couldn't bring him back Chris Evans for a couple of episodes because it would have been millions of dollars and to reveal that he's a, a Skrull, you know. Yeah. That would, that would be thrilling. But then also if he's the only guy, if he's the only superhero you bring back and then he's revealed to be a Skrull, not really a huge revelation. So you've got to bring them all back. Exactly. Put them in a lineup and go, which one's the Skrull? Yeah. And that's extraordinarily expensive. And the second thing is as well, yeah. there's no in – in a show like this – in a, in a genre like this, mm. if you want a big reveal and for, for, you want it to be impactful, you need to sow the seeds of it earlier. Yes. And this, sh- this show has been on the boil for several years, so they would have had the opportunity to put clues in previous movies yeah. or TV shows, and then when you reveal it in the show, you could put a little flashback in and point out how they were yes. a scroll the whole time, but they haven't done any or of that. Or even have someone makes an Easter egg video and points it out. Right. I mean, Rody, like the biggest reveal is probably that Rody is a skull. But I a think scroll. A scroll, what I say? Instead of skull. I don't care. He's got a skull. He does he might. Yeah. But the thing He's is He's not got a complete skull now. <laughs> the thing about that is, like, I feel like that was only because fans were like, yeah, it feels like he if anyone was gonna be a scroll, you'd pick him because like he's an Avenger, but he's not a main player. You mm. could get Don Cheadle, he does TV. You know, there's a Terrence Howard thing, which haha, they swapped it over and yeah, right, nobody uh-huh. noticed or whatever. Not that that's relevant to this at all. So they went, fuck it, why not? Yeah. Mm. Don Cheadle. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Martin Freeman was a Skrull for a time, yeah. I guess, as well. And the, thing, the thing as well also is that we know who the Skrulls are pretending to be. Besides Rhodey, we know all who the Skrulls are pretending to be from the first episode. Yeah. Because we see them in their Skrull compound yep. and they're like, oh, you're going to be him and you're going to be him and you're going to be him. Yeah. And and um, we know Kingsley Benadir yeah. uh, playing Gravik, who's the, the main villain of this Always has that face. Yep. We 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 always know it's going to be. Find out him. why. Yeah, yeah. It's the first guy that Fury had him kill. Or well, here's the thing. Also, if I may, if I may. So in the in the final episode, we get some revelations, which again would be exciting if they were foreshadowed previously in any way yeah. or interesting in any way. Um, but uh, Gravik's character, who has been part of uh, Fury's strike team for a really long time, for, yeah. for many years, and since has done a, since he was a little boy. Yes, and has done many missions for him. He reveals that the face he wears is that of the first man he killed on the first mission Fury sent him on. Yeah. And it's it's pictures a big reveal. And I think Ben Adir does a really good job of selling it. He's a good actor. I think it's you can feel the emotion behind it, but there's no there's no substance behind yeah. that because he's like well, first of all, because he's not saying it to actual Fury, he's saying it to Amelia Clark's character, disguised <laughs> as Fury. But I think even if you did say it to regular Fury, he'd be like, huh. Yeah. 
Just, oh, that that's interesting. I've killed a hundred people yeah. this week. That's exactly right. Oh, you killed it. Okay, and, and then the guy. And had, also, like, why would I even remember that? Exactly. And the guy apparently had a wife and and a family and what have you. And that's you know, but but also probably was a bad guy. Yeah. You know. So. But even if he wasn't, like, yeah. Fury doesn't care. Yeah. So what I was going to say is, first of all, you know, a show that is about characters who can become anyone. Mm. If if you're not using that to build a sense of real paranoia. Of, of the you know the supporting characters who could be a scroll and etc. Yeah, what a waste of time. But also this revelation isn't anything. Let me pitch you something, James. All right, we're in full on hater mode. Is what's happening here. Wow. But imagine this. Imagine if. I mean, let me just turn the dial that we have in the studio. <laughs> okay. To full on hater mode. Full on hater mode, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. So imagine if this character showed up, and Fury was like, "That man looks exactly like my son." Yeah. But my son's dead. Yeah, we're setting aside Skrull wife. This is a different. This is sure. a different. It could be Skrull wife. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. But, but this is a, this is a different child. But then you're like, well, okay, well, you know, it's it's obviously the Skrulls messing with me, you know. Yeah. But I'm not going to fall for it, kind of thing. Yeah. But then, so maybe that's it. Maybe his son is dead, and they've just got a file on the him and the kid, and they know how to mess with yeah. it. Or maybe they've captured his son and yeah. they've put him in the machine, so they have all his memories. Or maybe it is his son. Yeah. Or maybe they prestige and at the end it's both. Yeah. You know? So you're saying that maybe something should happen. Maybe something <laughs> should have happened. <laughs> interesting, yeah. Interesting. Or maybe this, maybe at the end he leaves and we never know. Yeah. You know? That's that's the, the essence of the I mean, there's the a lot of things. There. There's a lot of people that leave and we never know at the end of this. <laughs> it's true. You're right. I would yeah. say. Yeah. But no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. There's no – where's the paranoia? Yeah. Like I'm – like – the whole time I'm thinking, oh, was Olivia Coleman's character a scroll? Ah, oh, who cares? <laughs> she wasn't, no. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, just mm. the idea, but I mean, you know, it's it's, it's the, the most popular movie, but like the Winter Soldier, you don't know who's in it and who's not, how mm. deep does it go, you know, and that bleeds over into other movies and all this, and other kinds of things. And this bleeds into one movie sort of, mm. you know? Yeah. It's it's nothing, and also apparently there's a million of them. Right. What? Is, okay, but like, what does that reveal? There's a million. Is there? That's a lot. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> All what right. What are they doing with that? Well, they're just sitting around mostly, <laughs> having regular jobs. You know. <laughs> Maybe you even go. Ben Mendelssohn's the villain, right? Because they had a relationship, and it fell apart, and now Mendo's like yeah. you betrayed me, and you promised me a home, and you didn't. But again, you could, but but the, you know, and but there's so many op because anybody can be anybody. Maybe that isn't Mendo's. Maybe maybe yeah. maybe he died and he's been replaced, or maybe he he does feel betrayed or what have you. But you know, just the, again, there, there you're was, suggesting that something should I happen. Could have, I'm <laughs> suggesting that something might have it might have been good if something. Furthermore, <laughs> it might have been good if something had happened in this show. Yeah. Uh, well, here's some two things that did happen: Maria Hill dies and Ben Mendo dies. Yeah, that's right. And they, just they both shot. Uh huh. And then. That's that's the end of those characters. I sure guess. is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or they can all come back because of scrolls and <laughs> maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah God, yeah. I loved in the. I might have been the final episode. I might have been the second to last because I watched them like like one and then the other. Like okay. I don't know, a day apart or whatever. Because I wasn't in a. That's rush the correct to way to do this. it. Yeah, by the way. I like to think. Yeah. I like to think so. But there's a moment where Nick Fury goes to one of his many graves, mm-hmm. and then he's got a secret compartment. And he opens it up and in there there's a gun and an eye patch. It's, and he puts on his eye, eye patch like that fucking means anything. Right? Like. Uh, because the, the, He may as well just put on a name tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lanyard. So, <laughs> and, and this is a problem which, which you know, sometimes affects the, the MCU and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I feel it and sometimes it, it doesn't. It's that time passes in the MCU in between the movies mm. and – some like and and we're expected to just sort of roll with the changes. Yeah. Sometimes big changes have happened, and sometimes they haven't. So the idea behind this one is like, oh well, Fury's lost a step, hasn't he? Mm. You know, he's gotten too old for this. When did he get too old for this? Yeah, in, like, in space. In space, I guess. Well, people kept telling him that he's lost it. Yeah, yeah. But there was. But never... then it's thematically he's putting the eye patch on to signify that he's yeah, that no, he's I got back it. to his old. But self. like it also <laughs> it doesn't do anything for him. No. It's just like a the the way that he looks. Mm. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. It, there is barely any difference. He should have said, I'm mostly here for the gun. <laughs> should have added but he that, has a gun. They should have added that line in ADR. But, like, where's any... I wanted two guns. Where's any... There's a million scrolls, <laughs> so I need at least 20 bullets. <laughs> I didn't get the sense that... Like, cause there is this kind of thing that he's lost a step. 
But mm. I didn't really get the sense that he got it back. Mm. He didn't have any good action sequences. Yeah, yeah. Remember the bit where he had to cut his way out of the car or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Remember the bit in the Avengers where he picked up a rocket launcher for a yes. second? Yes. Well, also, you know, one thing that I think uh, uh, has been suggested on the internet, people will say, speaking of Captain America the Winter Soldier, and we've, we've always said, oh, I love the, you know, there's a, little, there's a little bit of an espionage vibe to that, like a, yeah. like a Cold War thriller kind of situation, like not full tilt. Something but just a, happens. Something happens in that. And, and we've, you know, we've often said, oh, what if, what if, the, what if we got a, you know, a, 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 an espionage thriller in the Marvel Universe, the MCU, and people have said, oh, well, no, you have it. You don't like it. What's, what's the deal there? Well, it should have been good. <laughs> you know, we want that, and also it's yeah, good. Yeah, you can't just do it. Right? And, and I think, you know. <laughs> it has to be two things. That's exactly right. And, like, beyond it being an, an espionage thriller and a spy thriller, mm. like, we've recently got crazy spy stuff with the Mission Impossible franchise. And or. And, and or the last Bond movie, that yeah. kind of thing. Like, give me, if we're, we're in an elevated universe filled with superheroes and that sort of stuff, if you're going to give me an espionage thriller mm. and a spy thriller in the Marvel Universe, like, knock it up a notch. Yeah. Like, give me, I want to see... I think they thought that them being Skrulls was them not knocking. Yeah, I guess it was. But like, even like, even even if you're saying, "Oh, Fury, he's lost a step or whatever," I think he could still jump out of a plane without a parachute. Totally. You know, that's a fun little give. Give us a fun little action scene. He's got a hologram jetpack. He's got a hologram (laughs) jetpack. Exactly. This stuff writes itself. (laughs) You know, you're right. Give us, you know, a a sequence akin to the the the. Where's his stuff? Where's his stuff? He's just got a gun and an eye patch. And the eye patch didn't even have anything in it. Didn't have anything in it. Not a laser or nothing. Not a goddamn laser. Also, he looks cool without it. That's kind that of one like, cloudy yeah. eye with the scar. That's exactly right. It's way cooler. The, the thing about Fury in the comic books, whether it's original David Hasselhoff style Fury or, or, or present day Fury, yeah, it, Shield is full sometimes he's a crazy robot. Stuff. <laughs> Agents of Shield. Uh, Coulson had the flying car. He had Lola. Yeah, give me anything like that. Give me. S- some gadgets and some fun stuff, you know? And then at the end, yes. he just goes back to space. Right? It's like nothing happened. Mm. There's a million scrolls on Earth. It's like yeah. eight less, I yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. my goodness. Mm. Uh, so speaking of, so a big point of contention is, and they've answered this more afterwards, but how long was Rhodey a skull? Skrull? <laughs> how long has Rhodey had a, scr- had a skull? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> now, okay, so... So the, the this has been answered. Oh, okay, officially. Yeah. What okay. do you think? Well, so so the the question arose because when uh, when Skrull Rhodey is killed and they go to rescue original Rhodey in the the, uh, the Skrull facility, he's wearing a hospital gown, and a lot of people have said that looks exactly like the hospital gown he was wearing at the end of uh, C- Captain America's Civil, Civil War, War yeah. which suggests that. And also, he had some trouble walking in the in the sequence. So yeah. they've suggested this this takes place. Uh, that he was captured rather by the scrolls after civil war so that in that the infinite the the rhodian infinity war and endgame etc yeah was a scroll i don't think that's true but unless, unless you have a that's revelation that's what they said yeah oh, that's Apparently disappointing that's the that's the implication because other people on the internet also have... i feel like people would have like people picked up on that and they went yeah maybe yep yeah, well, exactly. That's true. Because otherwise, maybe you would have put yeah. that in the movie. That's exactly right. The show. Well, see, the, 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 and also, what I think Marvel is, is. I think they're not committed to like. No. They're, they're often. The, the, this, and I think, again, also subject to change. Yes. I think if enough voices say, well, that doesn't make any sense, mm. they will very much change it. Because I would suggest that in Endgame, I do think you see him bleed, and he bleeds red. Sure. And the Skrulls famously bleed purple. Yeah. So probably not him. If I look, if I had to, and the the, th- the thing about it is obviously, like, like you're maybe absolutely they, right. Maybe they took him out for a minute. Yeah, that's well, exactly. If if uh, if if it's Skrull Rhodey in Infinity War and Endgame, then why didn't he do any Skrull stuff at all? Like yeah. even when he was alone, he didn't transform back into a Skrull at any point. Also, like why keep them? Yeah. To what end? That's a good point. So they can come back. That's the reason. Yeah, that's, you're absolutely right. I guess yeah. it's also like that they're not entirely bad guys, but like mm. you're taking somebody's life anyway. What is your your plan? Doesn't the machine hold on, give them the memories? Yeah, but once you've done that. Oh, I see. They're not making new memories oh, it's in the box, point, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. like you're taking their life. Mm. You can't let them out because then they'll tell, like, they'll tell somebody what happened. They'll tell on you. They'll tell on they'll you. They'll tell on you to their teacher. They'll dob on you. <laughs> that's right. So That's I don't, right. why even keep them? Yeah, yeah. So you can be like Martin Freeman. Yeah, here. you should let them go and be like, yeah, dob on us if you want. But remember, Dibba Dob is wearing Appies, <laughs> Rody. So, you know. Oh, but anyway, the, the counter argument is that 
yeah, he bleeds he bleeds blood in Infinity War and human blood in Infinity War and Endgame. Sure. Uh, and also uh, during Infinity War and Endgame, he wears like the exo frame legs yeah. to, to help him walk. And then in, in uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, he doesn't wear them. So a lot of uh, the other theory okay. is that he got snatched after Endgame, but before Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, that makes more Which, sense. And I mean, look, and it, the problem. Maybe he went in for a prostate exam and they snatched it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know? That's the, what you're saying? How are your legs? They're fine. What about the prostate? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, also, like, who cares? Right. Also, do because you want to do a cat? What is yeah. what's going to happen? So, because he's in Armor Wars, which yeah. is a movie now or a TV series. That's which a great one question. It's a great question. We don't have the answers here for you, but anybody can Google it. That's the magic of Google. <laughs> Armor Wars is coming up, and which Don Cheadle is starring as Rhodey. Yep. So presumably there'll be one scene at the start where he's like, "Yeah, I've caught up on everything." Yeah, I'm. Se-. He'll be at Tony Stark's grave, and he'll be like, "I didn't even know he was dead. Yeah, I didn't even know he was sick." Yeah, he'd say. I'm yeah. actually. I'm also here to retrieve my war machine suit, which That's I right. keep in his grave, and this memory chip that I'm going to shoot into my head right now. <laughs> and now everything. Now I'm up to date. That's They'll right. do that. They'll just wave a magic wand and be like, "I'm up to date," and then we will never think about it again. Did fake Rhodey die? Rhodey. Yeah. Yeah, get shot in the head. That's great. Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> Speaking Nick of Fury, shot I... him in the head. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Speaking of uh, things that are cool, if I don't know if somebody died or not, go on. I did. Um. The, did Gravik die at the end? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Did he explode or was he kicked hard? No, a uh, guy shot him really hard through the chest with a laser. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. Okay, great. Anyway. Do you want to talk about that big dramatic I, scene? I do want to talk about that you, this, yeah. That you definitely remember. Okay, so they both get super scrawled. No, okay, but, 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 Let's wind it back a little bit. Okay, so the other thing Gravik is looking for, to destroy the world, yeah. to trick the president into bombing everything, he wants mm. that sort of thing. Dermot Mulroney. That's right. But he also wants something called the Harvest, which is a vial consisting of... I got the names. Okay. Well, it's consisting of the uh, samples of DNA from basically every superpowered being that we've seen, every hero, every villain. I've it's got all the in names. a vial, and you can splash that on a, on a scroll, and they'll turn it into a super scroll of Now you've got to put them in a big whirly You've got to put in the whirly gig machine, and the big light goes. Yeah, exactly. So, you've got to put them in the Gravitron. Yeah, the, the Gravitron. Very good. <gasps> Gravitron. <laughs> you go to the Royal Melbourne show and eat some ice cream and a, and a cotton candy. You get in the Gravitron and then you vomit you everywhere. You big, big up powers. <laughs> That's right. Big okay, powers. So, for, so for people who are perhaps unaware, in the comic books, the Skrulls could never defeat the Fantastic Four. Yep. Uh, and so they decided they Because sec- they didn't want to. That's right. But they decided one day they did want to. <laughs> and so their secret weapon was going to be the Super Skrull. So they yep. created a Skrull who could not shapeshift anymore but had all the powers of the Fantastic Four. Yes. And, and subsequently there have been different versions that have different powers. Yep. Uh, and so they've decided to go with this. Johnny Storm did it at the end of Silver Surfer. He absolutely did. Yeah. And so clearly Marvel have gone, well. What assets do we have? That's right. And for our, arms. Our viewers, they love it when the hero fights a villain who has roughly equal powers. They've loved it since, I, since Iron Man. Yeah. Boy, boy, are they going to love it if we give the hero and the villain every power. Here we go. Here are the powers. Okay. Official. All right. Flora, this is from IGN. Flora Colossus, which is Groot. Korg, Frost Beast, Hulk, Captain Marvel. That's enough. Yeah. You could just be like Captain Marvel. That's all you <laughs> need. Mantis, yeah. Thanos, Cull Obsidian, Extremis, Ebony Moor, Captain America. And Ebony Moore's rings. Yeah, Ebony Moore's rings. Yeah, we'll talk, yeah, we'll go yeah. to that. Captain America, by the way, pointless. You've got you don't Hulk. Need- <laughs> You've got the Hulk. Drax. Is what you, did you get to Drax? I can't remember. Uh, I haven't done Drax yet. Okay. Got well, Drax. Ghost. Uh, yeah, okay. Winter Soldier. You've got Captain America. Yeah. Drax, Corvus Glaive, Abomination. Again, you've got the Hulk. Mm. Proxima Midnight, one of the Outriders. Chitari, Valkyrie. Thor Odinson, Gamora. Now, as you, me- as you mentioned, with the Super Skrull, takes on four powers of the Fantastic mm, Four. That's right. Pick four. Right. Because this is an insane cast yeah. that you've got here. You've got nine of these are strong guys. Yeah. Like Korg, Hulk, Thanos, Carl Obsidian, added, they Abomination. Added, they should have added X-Men character <laughs> strong guy. Just the guy who's strong. It's the same power. Yeah. Just pick one. Except so, one has weird tattoos. Also, I didn't know that Drax's, like the markings on his arm, I thought they were branding or tattoos or something. They are. 
Okay, but they just grow out of his arm. Yeah, they're not supposed to be there. Yeah, right. So what you would pick, you yeah. pick four, you'd go strong guy, someone who could fly, the phasing. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, yeah, an extremist yeah. for the healing. Yeah. And, like, that's – why? And now you've got this person running around in the universe. Not, not for long. With, no. What they should have even done at the end of this is, like, oh, the powers are fading off yeah, me or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and what? here's what they should have done. Why James. can they do magic? Let, let me <laughs> – I know. Let me throw this out to you before we nitpick everything to pieces. How about this? What if in what if they hadn't done this to this extent and in, in the Marvels, the big villain through quantum entanglement or whatever yeah. gets all the good powers? They get Hulk, they get Captain Marvel, sure. they get uh, Thor or whatever. Yep. And then like Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel, she gets all the also ran powers. She gets Mantis and she gets Ghost and she gets all the lame ones. Sure, yeah. Right? And the Bad guy's like, aha, you're in for it now. But yeah. Kamala Khan, because she loves all those heroes and she knows everything knows about the powers, them and yeah. she knows how to do everything and she's studied them or whatever, she knows she can use Manus's power to make someone go to sleep. Yeah. She knows she can use Ghost's power to become intangible or whatever. So you're saying like, something should happen. Something should happen. <laughs> they should save something interesting for another thing. <laughs> right? But this isn't anything. It's a punch-up. They're just two randos. It's a punch-up in a dirt field. They're just two randos <laughs> activating powers randomly. <laughs> How would they even know? They wouldn't. How does Gaia know to use Manus' uh, go-to-sleep mental powers? I mean, how does it even work? How does it work? I mean, I know we shouldn't get caught up in, like, the comic book logic of it. I think we can in this instance, <laughs> though. Well, I don't like to do that normally, but it's mm. just I, I do not understand mm. any of the decisions here. Yeah. I feel like it was – I feel like it's a reshoot. I feel like they went – what arms do we have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whose arms do we have on fire? And whose arms will we re- will people recognize? Exactly. That's exactly it. So every because the fight is like four minutes long, and I think they wanted every frame to be. Oh, look, Amelia Clark's got Drax's arm. Isn't that a bit of fun, kind of thing? You no, know? it's not. You're right. It's not. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is uh, but again. Magic. Yeah. Do you also have their memories? I guess. Maybe I don't know. Surely not from their DNA. I guess if you put them in the Gravictron, maybe you get their memories. <laughs> I don't know. But how would you – and also, as, you, as I think I mentioned earlier, when when uh, Gravic uses Ebony Moore's telekinesis, he gets Ebony Moore's rings as well. Yeah. How's that, how's that work? Because that was the file that they had. That's the file they had, exactly right. <laughs> and anyway, again, it, it, it doesn't end because anybody does anything clever with the powers, no. really. It's just – they just – Exchange laser beams and big fists. Yeah, and then until until Gaia shoots him through the chest with the with the the big zap, and that might be what happened. Yeah, that might be what <laughs> might be what happened. I don't remember. But what? Uh, look, if we we're going to put money on this, let's put one dollar on this, James. Sure. One gentleman's dollar. Okay. What do you think is going to happen to Gaia? We're never going to see her again. Mentioned again? What do you think? No. Not ever. Do you think they're gonna? Inhumans she might be this? in the Marvels. Mm. She's already? gonna go to live with the Inhumans on Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. and they're just never gonna mention her again. Yeah, I mean, this is a character. I mean, if they bring her back, yep. They, they, they can't. She can't have all of this. No, they're gonna. They're gonna. If she comes back, they have to nerf her. So yeah. they can either go. Well, she has everybody's powers, but they're not as powerful. Also, like you're gonna do Rogue at some point, right? Uh-huh. What is this? I don't know, man. <laughs> I think they'll either do. Yeah, like I said, they'll either do. She has everybody's powers. Uh, uh, but she, but but they're not as powerful. Maybe she can. They'll go. Oh, I can na- now. It's evolved, and I can only use one power at once, or something like that. Yeah. Or uh, uh, she'll be like, oh, I exhausted all the powers. Yeah. I can't use them anymore. You know. And I, bro- and I broke the Gravitron. That's right. I spilt a coffee on it. Mm. It doesn't work. Yeah, I'm gonna say my money's on. We won't see her again unless they need her in, like, Secret Wars. Yeah, okay. In which a, a soulless CGI version of Amelia Clark will yep. show up no, again. No, you're right. Um, and she'll yeah. shoot a Captain Marvel laser. So you might have to come back for a scene where everybody's there. Yeah, that's true, which yeah. they've already filmed, probably. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> or they've got – they've scared her. Mm. Anyway, I thought this was really interesting. This is from Arrowverse creator Mark Guggenheim. And oh. This is not in relation to this show in particular, but uh-huh. it's about the MCU. He spoke with the Arthi and – Siram show. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, so if I was suddenly in Kevin Feige's role, basically I would do what Iger was saying, which is prune the tree. You know, there's too much content. I'm like the biggest Marvel nerd ever and I haven't seen Moon Knight. I just can't keep up. So he's talking about like also. I can't believe Guy didn't get Moon Knight schizophrenia. <laughs> yeah, I know. It would have been handy. Because <laughs> she could have just blacked out and woken up and Gravity could be dead. Exactly. What so if he got the powers of Conchu? Oh, my like God. Big, the skeleton bird man. Or Maybe. Whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he said that maybe, you know, maybe he'd reboot the MCU. And I, they're probably, I feel like they are moving towards like a version of that. Yeah, maybe. After Secret Wars or whatever. Uh-huh. Maybe they'll reset the universe and maybe mm-hmm. they'll do like an ultimate kind of spin off thing. Maybe, yeah. But I also feel like with the X Men, the Fantastic Four down the line, you could just do that for a decade, really. If yeah, you get for it sure. Right. Yeah, you don't yeah. need any of this anymore. That's true. Because I feel like, and look, I don't believe in the comic book bubble. Uh-huh. when you do good movies. Right. I think it is irrelevant mostly when you release a comic book movie if it's good. I yeah. think Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is proof of that. Agreed. Right? Mm-hmm. So, but at the same time, it does feel like to me right now that we are on that comic book stunt treadmill that we were in the 90s. Absolutely. I feel like Avengers Endgame was the death of Superman. And then they were just like, what's next? Uh, Batman breaks his back. And it's been like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So every few months we get something's going to collapse the universe and whatever, but it's got to the point where it's like, you can't get me to care about this. Right, yeah. And I'm not saying that comics didn't recover from that. They have, but the, mm. but the numbers have never been the same. That's true. Stories have been, I feel like, have only gotten better in comic books. Yeah, uh-huh. But the literal numbers have never been the same. And yeah. I feel like they're very, if they keep doing stuff like this, yeah. they are very much in danger of that becoming... The, the MCU. That's exactly right. And I, a thing you said there I think is important, that comic books have never been better, but the MCU's, their, their tactic now is to, to, just to adapt that thing in the most superficial way as possible, yep. as quickly as possible. We've talked about uh, Thor Love and Thunder, mm-hmm. which adapts to sort of galaxy-spanning, time and space and dimension-spanning Thor storylines that ran for years, and they just knocked them both out in two hours. Yeah, And it's... You're not getting value for money there. No, you? you're absolutely no. not. And it's, I guess, and it's at least partially because Chris Hemsworth probably doesn't want to be Thor forever. Yeah. So you, you know, your options are either do it now or recast it, and maybe people don't like the new Thor. You know, maybe they don't. Mm. So yeah. Anyways, this is also off the back of this week that Wonder Vision was getting a steel book release with no discs in it. Is that true, or is that a? Apparently, that's not. A Disney initiative. That okay, I was sure. saying, and it's just a okay. thing that, like, uh-huh. where where are we at? Great. Doing this. Great, great question. So, look, you know, we've got the Marvels coming up. You mentioned there's things that you're still excited for. Still excited. Regardless of what happened in this series, I'm still excited for Armor Wars. Yep. I think that'll be cool, especially if we get a, a version of uh, Crimson Dynamo, Titanium Man, all those guys. Sure. The, the, the armored Iron Man villains that I love from back in the day. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for Loki Season 2 as well. Abs- I think yeah. I think Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson are a great combo, and I'm very excited to see them again. Mm. The Marvels, as you mentioned, uh, what else is coming out? Another, another, Craven, she, Craven uh, the Hunter. Oh, Craven the Hunter, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to have a Craven sweep of the box office once again. Uh, She-Hulk Season 2, if they ever make one. Doubt it. Uh, no, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. That's right. Mm. Um... And just the further adventures of Gaia and Drax's arm. See, I know like He's a lot He's going to speak in the voice of Dave Bautista. I, I know a lot of people hate She-Hulk and they're like, for various reasons that I quite frankly don't care to get into. Mm-hmm. But at least it wasn't like somebody's collapsing the universe and everything falls apart or That's whatever. True. At least it was like, yeah, this is, a, this is basically what modern She-Hulk comics are and it's yeah. a little bit different, isn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, you don't have to like that necessarily. But it seems like some things happened and they thought about it. That's right. What a fucking nightmare. Anyway. And that's the best we can hope for. <laughs> but I feel like, look, something good comes out next and I'm like, everything's fine. Yeah. Like when Guardians 3 came out, I'm like, oh, yeah. Of the, I mean, Ant-Man, I didn't like that, but this was great actually. Mm. So everything's fine. That's true. <laughs> yeah. All we need is a couple of things that are good and fine every year. That's what I want. I don't want a Marvel movie every month. Nope. Give me two good ones a year. Give me a movie a week. All right, great. <laughs> All right, let's move it along. Yes. Well, at least we did see a good thing this week, I guess. It's true, yeah. I'm assuming if you did did think this was good and saw it. I saw it and I thought it was good. Cool. Spoiler alert. That's right. So it's called Talk to the Hand. It's an Australian... James, you keep doing that. What? The Australian film industry is in enough trouble. <laughs> it's not without, my fault. Without you giving it a silly name to a movie, then that people, will, people will go to the cinema and they'll say, can I have one ticket to Talk to the Hand? And they'll say, no. Well, that is not a movie that is playing, and I will provide no other suggestions. Get out of my establishment, they'll wow. say. Yeah. So people might be – they might be torn between saying Talk to the Hand or The Haunted Mansion this week. Yes. Two ghost properties. Mm. What do you think people might lean towards? I think they should watch Talk to Me. Well, yes. 
that we don't know the box office results as of yet because we're recording this a little bit early. That's true. But this has a budget of $4.5 million. That's low. Well, The Haunted Mansion, I want to talk about how it came together. I'm going to say $140 million. I think you might be right. Let's have a look. I'm going to say one hundred and twenty. Okay. <laughs> 157. Oh, right, okay. Seems like a lot. It seems like a Apparently lot. it's all right. Okay, People great. People seem to be thinking it's okay. Look okay. Stanfield's in it. He's good. Uh, before we get into the ins and outs, and we're not going to spoil it up top, there will mm-hmm. be time codes if you want to jump to that. But uh, right. I would say if you like horror movies, yes. uh, if you like kind of your exorcist kind of vibes or whatever mm. with a modern spin, you should absolutely see this without knowing any other things about mm. this movie. If you like watching a movie and you go, oh, these people are Australian but they're young and I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like how young and Australian they are. I don't like it. Okay, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you like that. If you like that. Yeah, you could get you could get into it. But uh, what do you think the story was? Oh, it's about it's in bloody Adelaide, isn't it? Yeah. Um, City of churches. Bloody need one, don't you? <laughs> bloody need Ooh. one in this bloody movie. And there's, a, there's, some, there's, some, uh, there's some young teens. And they're, uh, you know. That you hate, apparently. I hate them. <laughs> And they're, you know, they're, uh, you well, know. Well, they're all like 23 to 25 in real life. Oh, in real life. life. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, And they are, um, you know, they're uh, they're looking for something to do as kids often are. And, yep. and, and uh, you know, and, and they're like. They love social media challenges. They do love social they media challenges. They probably did the ice bucket challenge. That's they're right. They probably planked. That's right. And once you've done those, once once you've conquered all those worlds, where where else is there to go? Talk to the dead. Exactly. With a haunted hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, not just talk. Uh, it's. Possession, basically. That's right, yeah. yeah, if you've seen the trailer, and again, if you wanted, if you don't want to know anything, you know, mm. you should probably just skip this entire. I feel like the trailer wasn't entirely representative of the movie. Do you mean? I thought the movie was going to be like set in one house, maybe. Oh, okay, and it was sure. going to be like one extended kind of like sequence. the latest Evil Dead kind of. It felt like it was going to oh, be okay, that, but yeah. it's not that really. Yeah, but it's um. So it's, I didn't know any of that. I wasn't really at no expectations because that's right. why I like to enter a movie. Oh, yeah. I don't bring any pre, preconceived ideas, you okay, know. I'm a right. blank slate. It's true. Because of my dumb brain. You're the perfect movie watcher. That's right. An idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Easily amused or scared. That's right. <laughs> um, but uh, look, and it's and it sort of – it's it's a movie that it's, – it's very brisk. It gets to the premise very quickly. God There's damn. no faffing about nah. It's there's like, not like, it's like ninety minutes, right? There's not like twenty five minutes of, of kids going, "What really? There's a hand? Yeah, and you can talk to the dead with a hand. There just cool? is. There just is. All right, get used don't to believe it. me while we're doing it. Yeah, we're doing it right now. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Look, very very good cast. I thought um, I can rat- rattle off some names here. We've got do. Sophie Wilde, Zoe Tarakes, uh, Miranda Otto. Miranda Otto's in it. Stray's own Miranda Otto. Joe Bird. Alexandra Jensen, all really good. A lot of faces. I've seen a few of them before being Australian, but a lot of faces that maybe you haven't seen. Yeah. Miranda Otto is probably well, easily the most famous. Mm-hmm. She's in Lord of the Rings, if uh, right. if you if you are, are or are not familiar. Mm. But I just feel like in itself, what a great concept yeah. to be like. <laughs> I mean, what would kids do if they found a hand that could – that, you know, you could talk to the dead and, and whatever, and it made you feel pretty good and weird. Yeah. You'd probably do this, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd film it. And you'd film it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this concept, actually. And based on the teens that were in the movie theater with me as I was watching this, they would also be on their phones. Were they hooting the and hollering? No, they were just on their phones. Oh. Yeah. Did it get many laugh? Uh, it was only like three or four other people. Yeah, mine was a pretty sparse screening, but I did mm. see it like, Thursday morning. Yes. Um, yeah. So, my sort of Thursday night. So like opening day. Yeah. You know. Hopefully this will, I feel like this will build. And I think whatever. so, yeah. I think it'll do all right. But so this concept actually comes from Daly Pearson, who is a co-founder of Ludo Studios. Who you might know they make Bluey. Oh. So in, he's also Thor's roommate. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I do recognize da- Daly Pearson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Is he the voice of any of the characters? He might be. Okay. I don't right. think he's in it. But right. maybe as a background. Ah, right, character. okay, but yeah, I, no, yeah. But not, I've seen him on Twitter, yeah. Yeah, he's okay. not up front. But, uh-huh. So he sent this concept to Danny and Michael uh, Filippo who – And they said, of, he said, do you think this will make a good Bluey episode? <laughs> <laughs> do you think Bluey and Bandit could uh, talk to the dead with a hand, with a severed hand? And then make you cry about it. Mm. They make you feel all the feels, Mason. Oh, yes. Uh, so he sent that in 2018 and then they basically took the concept and developed it from there. So they make – they do YouTube videos or they did. Oh, right. And they – they're really good. Not if you've seen it, they do like hyper violent, over the top kind of. And I guess sketches isn't the right word. It's it's better than you'd think. Concepts. And, ob- cons- and obviously, based off this, you can see that that they're mm. clearly like 
clearly got an eye for this kind of thing. I also think if you watched any of their videos and you saw this, there is an incredible amount of restraint in this. Oh, right. Yeah. Which okay. I, yeah. And this is on YouTube. This movie isn't. No, no, but the start, the other stuff. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, yeah. They got this huge YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay, right. But and that's, two not, twins. and that's not. Not two twins. One set two, of twins. One set of twins. Okay. But and, and that is not. Is their channel not constantly being demonetized due to extreme violence? No, I mean, it's like cartoony kind of. Oh, okay, right. Well, I can show you a quick clip if you want. I don't want okay. it. I can just imagine it. Anyway, so this premiered at like the Adelaide Film Festival last year yep. and then it played at Sundance uh-huh. and then a bidding war started. Uh, uh-huh. And then A24 basically picked it up, and that's how we got here. Nice. Which is like, what an incredible story. That's that's super cool. And I think what this does well is a couple of things, more than a couple of things. Let's name five. You okay. start. No, I'll go. <laughs> okay. I think the exorcism scenes uh-huh. are like a really good balance of kind of horror and a little bit of comedy mm. and just this sense of tension and kind of what's going to happen, but because all the characters a lot of the time are having a good time, you're also having like yeah, a right. good time. There's like a montage. You're drinking in the cinema. Yeah, you're yeah. like, I'm drinking like you teens. <laughs> I thought that was, yeah, just mm. a really interesting way to play. So basically you, you hold you hold this hand of the dead and where did it come from? They kind of get into it. And then you, you say, talk to me, and then a, a spirit appears in front of you that only mm. you can see. And if you say, let me in, they can possess you. But if they possess you for longer than 90 seconds, there's a chance that that bleeds over into the real world. Yes. And some, one of the characters in particular holds a hand for longer than 90 seconds and. Mm. They're fine. They're they're not fine, Mason. Bad things happen. They seemed fine. Initially, sure. No, they seemed fine the whole movie. I don't think so. I didn't, that's not how I interpreted it. Mm, Yeah, but you know, I'm a blank slate. What happened to them seems normal to me. (laughs) Because of all the crazy stuff that happens to me, I'm like, this seems very normal. Yeah. Uh, Here's another thing that I liked about this movie. We're at two, two or five. Sure, let's Uh, go. I thought the effects were very good. Yeah. I felt like they did. I don't know what the budget was. I think maybe you mentioned it, but I wasn't listening. Uh, but they, I think they did a lot with a little. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was all, you know, they didn't rely on like heavy visual effects. They, But it was like, you know, they, they had an effective kind of makeup look for when you're yeah. being possessed and like an eye, the look for the eye. And, yeah. you know, we, we see somewhat of the spirits that are being, you mm. know, that are being. Uh, Anything where anytime somebody s- smashes into something. That's mm. one thing that they specialize in. If you watch their yeah. channel, it's a lot of people smashing into and through things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing more ex- upset. You know in a movie they're, they're, uh, where somebody gets like, somebody will grab somebody's head and then crack them into a yeah. wall? Like that's some of the most upsetting like visual effects I think you can do and it, it's stuff like see, that. You're going to see a bit of that here. Yeah, yeah. I but it's so. not like saw mm. is it? It's no. not like you see somebody's head come apart and yeah. whatever. Oh, those somewhat yeah. <laughs> depending – I also thought that the spooky entities that they come across were good. And you only kind of get like fleeting glimpses of a lot of them. And just what a cavalcade of colourful characters, you know, mm. just like some horny, some hungry, all, <laughs> all gross. Right, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just some just some wacky personalities that, yeah, that will right. uh, – because every time you do the possession thing, you do, basically you don't know mm. who – the severed hand is like a box of chocolates. Yes. You never know what you're going to get. But probably something awful. Probably awful. Sometimes something humorous. Mm. Um, so, yeah, one of the characters' mother died a couple of years prior, so that's like a point in this and, you know, it's her trying to commune with this character. I think we're going to get more into that in spoilers. I also felt that because one of the leads kind of it bleeds over into her the real world, mm-hmm. it felt a bit – I thought it was might go a bit sixth sense where – she might be trying to help these entities, but right. it's more like drag me to hell. Mm. It's more. Or the ring. Or the ring, yeah. Where it's like, oh, maybe we could help this person. Maybe we could help this. Uh... No. No. No, you can't. Don't be doing any of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I don't really know what else to say without spoiling well, it. that's right. We talked about secret yeah. invasion for a million we years. We really so... did. But I think, look, if you like, you know, this yeah. kind of thing, if you like A24, yeah, yeah. I think this is, you know, up there with any of the things that they. Yeah, and out. also I think, you know, I. Uh, Horror movie fans are very good, it seems, at seeking this sort of stuff out. Yeah. But if you're not a horror f- movie fan, you just like, you know, a, a, a well-put-together Australian film or, you know, you just want to try out something new, Yeah, check this out, I reckon. I thought it was, yeah, like genuinely unnerving at parts, like the twists and turns, like I liked the mm. ending. I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it really came together yeah. in a really interesting and harrowing way. And I think the sound design also was very oh, good. Oh, really like, good. Very upsetting. Except for one point Uh-oh. at the start where somebody gets hit with a pillow as a joke and it's like, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> clang, real misstep. 
That's from the, the, from only, the folks that, at Bluey. That Louis. will be my only complaint. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. Best movie ever, I'm going to say. Definitely. Uh, should we get into some little spoilers yeah. and so I forth? think also if you like the latest Evil Dead, yeah, uh-huh. I think there's a good chance that you'll like yeah. this yeah. as well. If you like Pearl or any of yeah. that stuff. you know. If you don't like it when teens now are wearing the fashions that you were wearing as a teen, it makes you seem very old, Yeah, you're not going to like this. It seems like a lot of what you didn't like about that movie is – Related to the teens. It's in primarily this. about short sleeve shirts over long sleeve well, shirts. Mine was the pillow thing. Okay, right. <laughs> All right, spoilers. Big time spoilers, baby. Uh, again, you probably save yourself. If, go and see this. Save yeah, yourself mm. the. Also, it's an A24 and. They're doing all the right things in terms of they. That's true. You know the, the strikes. There. If they wanted to sell, if they wanted to buy some advertising space at the Weekly Planet, we would take their money. Absolutely. Yeah. But then we wouldn't do it. <laughs> what are they going to do? We're in Australia. What are they? Wait. Gonna... Are oh. some of them in Australia? Oh no. <laughs> They've got the main guy from Bluey to beat us up. <laughs> uh, so spoilers. Mm. So the lead character. Yes. Her mother passed away a couple of years earlier, mm. and she believes during the movie that she's uh, one of the one of the kids does the possession thing, and her mother, what who she believes is a mother, talks to her through the kid. Yes, she can't see it, and then soon after that, it seems like something else happens to this kid character who's like thirteen, and he bashes his head into a coma, mm-hmm. and it's really horrific, and he tries to pull out his own eyeball. Yeah. And it's very unpleasant to look very. at. Very. Do you th- and then her mother like reappears during the movie, so she's able to then see yeah. these entities. The, the kids stayed possessed for too long, yeah, and uh, so the, so the, the the prophecy has come true that it started to bleed out into the real world. So she is seeing what she thinks is her mother, yeah, uh, who who, uh, who who tells her that what happened to her wasn't suicide. She, yeah, she just was. Uh, I guess. She accidentally took too many pills. Yeah, and maybe her father did it or whatever. There's, mm, yeah, 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 there's yeah. that implication as well. Do you think at any point, because yes. also they mentioned just in passing that the the entities can appear as anybody. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Do you think there was any point in this, even with that initial possession, that it was actually her mother? Maybe the first one. Yeah, mm. maybe, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, But that also could have been a, a, an entire, like a whole trick from the yes. very beginning. Mm, that's because true. he lets one person in. Yeah. Not like a second. That's true. But it seems as if I thought it seems as if the entity that got into that kid was or had already sized him up earlier. Right. Because yeah. you notice when one of them gets possessed and then looks up and goes, Oh, look who's here. Mm. And then there's nobody there and then the entity yeah, moves across. Right. And so I think that the one that possesses the little kid mm-hmm. was the one the entire time potentially. Maybe, yeah. But I I like that it's vague enough where it's like, I don't know, was it? Maybe. Yeah. But obviously from then on it probably wasn't her mother because yeah. her mother's like kill everybody you know. I think it's more effective as well if we don't learn the the complete mechanics of what happens in there yes. because otherwise we'll start picking it apart and being like, okay, but if blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. apparently there is like they have mapped out a whole lot of this, which I'll get into. Okay. But, yeah, I feel like there's enough information here that it's fine. There's also uh-huh. not a moment where somebody jumps on a Zoom meeting with a an expert overseas right, uh-huh. like Vinny D'Onofrio, uh-huh. which I think he's done that a couple of times and he's like, the thing about the possession is and whatever, whatever. Mm. They they meet a guy on a bus and he's like, yeah, I had this hand. It was yeah, yeah. awful. That's right. <laughs> I blame everybody but myself. Now let me get to my job that I hate. <laughs> I've got my high-vis on. Leave me alone. Yeah. I feel like also there's the implication that uh, they were going to stop regardless, right? That he says to them that once a spirit, if it does get into the real world, mm. the strength of it eventually fades and it just – Seemed like it was going to happen. To let yeah. go. Do you think that's what happened with the kid? Yeah, it seems that way, doesn't it? Because mm. they're, they're, the, the belief of all the other kids is that when he was possessed, mm. they didn't blow out the candle afterwards. Yeah, and that is a requirement. If you want to, if you want to break the spell, yeah. you got to blow out the candle. Nobody can remember if they did that or not. Yeah. Uh, so it's so so maybe he is he is still dying, and so they have to they have to do the possession again, light the candle, blow the candle out yeah. again to end it. But I think. It might have just ha- We don't really know, but that might have ha- happened. Yeah. Ah. Also, the candle is definitely out by now. Yeah, it probably is out. Probably yeah. is out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, because of the passing of time and so forth. You yeah. Know? But do you think that also applies to her? Because she was she did slightly longer than 90 seconds. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Uh-huh. So do you think that would have, if she had have waited it out, Oh. do you think it would have? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, harrowing ending. Yeah. Oh, also, is this is this movie a metaphor for like kids doing meth or something? Yeah, it's. I think it's drugs. <laughs> okay, yes. Right. Okay. Good. I would Just say checking. so. Drugs yeah. and addiction. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. social medias mm. and the like. Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Uh, anyway, harrowing ending. So yeah. So at the end, 
Uh, she uh, she thinks her mother is telling her, you've got to save the kid, the little kid, whose name is uh, I can't Kieran. Remember. I'll look him up. Yeah, Kieran. Kieran. Schmieran. Ed Schmieran. Ed, Schmieran. Ed, Schmieran. Ed Schmieran is the name of the kid. And she goes to him in the hospital. Yeah, she, the, the, the mother says, okay, you, you in order to, to Talk break. Talk to the hand cast. That's not what it's called. What do you keep? <laughs> stop, stop doing that. Um, so, so her mother. Her, Riley. What, Riley. So the, so the, 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 um. The mo- what she thinks is her mother says, okay, in order to save Riley, yeah, he's going to end up in hell maybe if you if, after. This or he's movie. already there. Maybe he's already there, and, and that also might not be true. That's true. I yeah. Feel like, yeah. Uh, so in order to do, you have to, uh, you you got to kill him. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, and so she takes him out. She takes him out of the hospital on a wheelchair uh, and attempts to push him into traffic. Uh, but then her other friend shows up and pushes her into traffic. Yes. Mm. And that's not very cool. It's not well. It's kind of cool. Do you think it's also she might have jumped? Yeah, maybe. Because you yeah. don't really see it. That's true. Yeah, that's she how might, I initially. Interpreted yeah, she might have it. had a change of heart. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. And then she gets up, and you're like, oh, I, I stupidly was like, well, it's pretty hard hit. That's good yeah. that she got up though. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. then she's been sixth sensed. That's true. She doesn't know she's dead, and then it cuts forward like an indeterminate amount of time, presumably mm. a few weeks or months, and the the boy has recovered. Yes, she's in the hospital, and she's like, great, this is. Good, all guess. that's all in her mind, her spirit mind. Uh, I think that part is real. Okay, I don't know. Uh-huh. And then everything goes dark, and it, <laughs> and then it ends on a harrowing note where she has been. She hears the striking of a match, mm. and she sees a light, and she has been summoned uh, by a living person to to the to the hand to, to Greece, talk, by the way. Yeah, to talk to the hand. Yeah, that's right. Just like the title of the movie. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so she. So that maybe you know. Well, I like what I loved about that implication is that maybe everybody who gets summoned by the hand was killed yes. in the manner or in some manner maybe surrounding if, the hand. Yeah. Oh, well, he's back. Oh, he's hello. Out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it could be. It's it could easily be that anybody who's ever been associated with this hand is that's where they end up. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. But I also think it's vague enough where maybe that's not true because nobody that they inter- they that they interact with is like don't touch the hand or whatever. Mm. But I guess if you got taken in by the hand, you'd be like fuck these people. Yeah, right, exactly. But yeah. it also seems like that everybody who not everybody they interact with is a bad person necessarily. That's true, yeah. mm-hmm. But I guess not everybody who uses the hand in this movie is also a bad That's true, yeah. a bad person. But I think all this is mapped out. I also think yeah, it was it was really interesting. There's a boyfriend character in this, uh-huh. and I thought the approach to him was really interesting because he's dating one of the one of the girls in this, and used to date the lead character very briefly, and they uh-huh. held, held hands for a minute, and they've never kissed or anything, and they've been going out for a few months, uh-huh. and then when a demon gets inside him or whatever, is like, oh, this guy's like not actually attracted to you, mm-hmm. and I think that just there's a whole lot of stuff that's implied about that character that's never said, like, is he asexual? Is he gay? And I think also what was interesting is they say that the reason that he's not, he doesn't want to, you know, to, to kiss his girlfriend uh-huh. is because he's religious. Right. But he'll also hold a possessed hand. Right. Which okay. makes me think that he's not really religious. Mm. He's just using that as an excuse. Right. Okay, because he sure. doesn't really know where he's currently right, okay, uh-huh. at. Okay. I thought that was a. Re- okay, that's, you know, that's, that's very reflective of kids, isn't it? Yeah. You know, just Teens finding so a way. And, yeah, right. And there's a moment where the, there's a bit with a foot and it's very upsetting. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Now, I thought also, and I was hoping you would recognize this, that we're recording too early for this to be online, uh-huh. but if somebody would have figured it out by now. Where at the end she's summoned to Greece, also because the directors are, are Greek. Ah. Or, uh, they have Greek heritage. Okay. And is that the other hand? Oh, yeah, okay, right. Because it said maybe the other hand is out there somewhere. Yeah, right. It might be the hand of uh, so uh, like uh, someone who can commune with the dead. It might be a demon's okay. hand or whatever. So the hand in the movie is a left hand. Yes. Because it's a reverse handshake that yeah. they do. But I can't remember. Can't remember if the other one's a right hand. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So actually I looked into this and uh, Danny, one of the directors, said, we want for people to have their own interpretations, be able to have that conversation, but all the clues are there, everything's planted, but we don't really want to uh, spell anything out. Okay. And in regards to making a sequel, he said, that would be so amazing. We have an entire mythology Bible that we don't even touch on in the film and explains everything from where the hand came from and there's little hidden clues on the hand and little seeds that we planted. We would just love the chance to be able to do a sequel. That'd be amazing. I mean, this if I had feels to guess, like a franchise. Yeah, right? for sure. If I had to guess, 
uh, I would say that that hand came from the Flinders Street train station toilets <laughs> based on the amount of graffiti on it. My goodness, yeah. yeah. Do you, I can't even remember what was written on no, it. No, I can't like, remember, I couldn't it. remember anything. But also there's a, there's a shot in it, maybe it's just a production error, but there's a shot there's a shot in the movie where the, one, the main character wears like a yellow sweater. It's got yeah. buttons on it. And there's a shot during one of the possession scenes where the buttons switch sides. And I'm like, oh, is this going to be? Oh, is this okay. going to be? A, is this a clue to what's happening in the rest of the movie? But then it never happens again. So I'm like, I okay, just reversed a shot. I think they just reversed a oh, shot okay, for whatever reason. So, right. Wow, that's the kind of thing that only you would notice. That's right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, really yeah. good. Uh huh. Yeah. I've seen a couple horror movies this year, and this was a good one. That's right. Also, yeah. yeah. Um, interestingly, these two guys they're doing the next Street Fighter movie. Are they what? I wrote they're working on Street Fighter 2. I don't think the movie is called Street, Street Fighter 2. If anything, it would be Street Fighter 3. I think it should be called a live action movie. I think it should be called Street Fighter 2. <laughs> yeah. It's the one people know, isn't it? It should be called Street Fighter 2, the good one. <laughs> Turbo edition. Like the good movie. Like the good <laughs> game that you liked. So, yeah, again, I feel like if you've seen any of this stuff, they can film action well and apparently they wanted to get into like a lot of the backgrounds of the characters. So yeah, right. I think there's a good chance. this. I think also this could be like – uh, uh, James Wan and um, what's his name? I met him in real life. Who did Saw with him? He did. Uh, Lee Winnell. Lee Winnell, yeah. Like a Saw-esque mm. kind of. Yeah, right. This we, we, we could get like at least 10 years of these. Yes. I feel there's enough going on here. And once the characters age out of the role, we can just put backwards baseball caps on them. And they're and back, baby. They're back. They're in high school again. Did you see the new Jigsaw poster? Yes, with the, with the tubes, which are presumably filled with rats. Tube flies. Chips for eyes, Why baby. is Jigsaw back, do you think? Um, uh, Reboot? Twin? Twins? Maybe. Or it's a mid-call? Some of oh, them yeah. are mid-calls, yeah, just right? Just chuck it in the middle, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Should we move it along? Let's move it along. All right, then. What is it, though? Oh, it's uh, what we're reading. Yeah? Then what we're going to read. Perfect. Nice. I'm doing a thing. What are you reading or doing? I haven't gotten to it yet. But did oh, you yeah. know there is a Steven Soderbergh TV series out currently? No. What is it about? It's called Full Circle and it's about a kidnapping in bloody Washington, D.C. Is it real? No. Like based on a real I event? I don't think so, no. But look at look at that cast. Full Circle. He did The Nick. Did you ever see The, the Nick? No, but I saw Ocean's Eleven. Oh, me too. Mm. Miniseries? Yeah, yeah. Foxtel Go. Ugh. Oh, it's on uh, Binge. It's on Binge. Oh, God, Australia. I hate that too. Yeah, it's not good. All right, let's check out this. Let's check out this cast. Daisy Beats, Claire Danes, Timothy Olf, and Dennis Quaid. Right. Oh my. Oh my God. William Sadler. Yep. Happy Anderson. That's right. The brother of Angry Anderson. That's exactly right. His opposite number from the Mirror Dimension. Oh goodness, this is great. But what a, that? What a cast for like. A, this has come out and I've never heard of this. I, I saw one tweet that was about it, and it was a tweet that was like, "Why is nobody talking about this series?" Great question. With, What's with, it, who, who developed it? I know he oh, – it's on Max, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're a fucking mess at the moment, aren't That's they? That's exactly right, which is probably why. But, I mean, the the very state of streaming, James, that this comes out unannounced and everybody's like, never oh, even yeah. heard of this. No, I really – and he directed all the episodes, it seems? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's fucking wild. Just knocked it out, it seems. Seems like he was just bored and he's like, I'll do it. I'll do this. Didn't I'll he film it. a movie on his phone once or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Every, he's done every movie on his phone. Oh, my God. He recorded Ocean's Eleven on a Nokia 5110. Oh, my God. Did you know that? How did he make it look like that then? Oh, it's just your imagination. Oh. It's so evocative. When you when they speak, you you imagine it. It is very evocative. Isn't it, though? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we both have been reading The Last Ronin again. That's right. Ninja Turtles comic because mm-hmm. we're going to cover it for the book club in That's coming right. weeks. Also, I thought we were going to do Ninja Turtles this week because I'm like, oh, Ninja Turtles is out in cinemas. Let's go see Ninja Turtles, the new Ninja Turtles movie. Not out in Australia. Turns out it's not out for a month. Right. But. Yes. Do you know what is out this What's week? What's out? The Meg 2. Oh. <laughs> this time there's three to Megs. Three of the Megs. I actually, I, I'm, kill two of the Megs. Uh, I, I'll I kill another three. I Megs. very much like the tagline, which uh, for people who haven't seen it, it's it's uh, new Meg, old chum, mm-hmm. and, uh, and Statham is the chum. That's right. I think that's fun. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I guess <laughs> we'll do that. Now. We'll cover that next week. Yeah, um, we were going to do Snake Eyes this week. I know. I said it. There's simply no time. We had two things to review, but yeah. next week we don't have Ninja Turtles, so we can do the Meg and Snake Eyes. That's true. I know it's not the best combination of things, but we got to get it done at some point. And it's very so, true. Well, a lot of people probably have rewatched Snake Eyes anyway, but you, you, if you haven't, mm. perfect opportunity this week. Here's something I played and beat, Mason. Go on. I got given a PlayStation 5 oh. by a police officer 
who stole it from a house. Oh, my God. That's true. Wow. Wow. No, I, my wife, Claire, yes. gave it to me as a gift. I know her. Yeah, you know her. And I got the one game that I only that I wanted to play on it, mm. Jedi Survivor, yeah. the sequel uh, that's only available on the PlayStation 5 and I guess probably PC or whatever. Uh-huh. Anyway, I finished it. I put like 30 hours into it's it. a lot of hours. It's fucking great. Mm-hmm. It's... Also, as someone who really liked the first game, yeah. I, this one just clicked like way more with me and way faster. Because you have a gun. Because I have a gun. But I didn't even use the gun. Whoa, it's just knowing it was I, I didn't. I didn't even want to because you can kind of – or maybe you can upgrade it more and I just didn't do that particular uh-huh. side mission. But you can pick two stances. Yeah, right. And one was my regular lightsaber stance. Oh, yeah. And the other was the the big like Kylo Ren kind of one. So yeah, I went okay, with right. those two. Uh-huh. Oh, that's the behind the back one. Yeah, no, no, that's uh, that's that's the Force Anakin. Awakens guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. Know. Whatever. Star Killer. Yeah, doesn't Anakin. matter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I think all the like all the characters and storyline works. Cameron Monaghan, mm-hmm. who sometimes listens to this show, is the lead in this. <laughs> is really good in it. Again, yeah. as I've said before, I'd love to see him in like a live action thing, and hopefully they're building towards that. One of the big improvements of this game is fast travel. Yeah, it is just a delight. To mm. navigate the different worlds, and if you don't want to zip back to the just ship, sit back. And I didn't even fast travel like that much, mm. but it was just nice to be able to do it. It's just nice to have fast to. travel and a gun. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that was the of, of Jedi. It was a Jedi outcast. Was that the name of the? First that one? was another one. Okay, Jedi well, Survivor. Jedi uh, what was it? No, first one. Was the, it was this one. Anyway, the, the thing about the first one that it was a real chore was that yeah, you had to. You had to navigate this this hostile fallen order. Fallen order. You had to navigate this hostile environment. Yeah, and and every you know, time you save, they all reappear. That's exactly right. And you had to, which is know, still true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, but you had to navigate this environment, and it was often quite hectic. And then it was then you finished your mission, and like, you're like, well, now we have to walk all the way back. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, exactly. Which is realistic, can, I guess. And, can, and obviously, because it's a PS5, you can zip straight away. That's true. Any, you know, like the load times are, are, yeah, yeah. are barely anything. I also felt like. And I don't know whether it's because I've just played more games that have this kind of style of combat since. Uh-huh. The combat just clicked with me. Okay, great. All that kind of mm-hmm. parry, dodge kind of. Yeah. Like I don't think I'd really had a lot of experience with that in the first game. Uh-huh. But I think maybe playing through like the God of War games and whatever, there's right. like, you, are, you do have to time a lot of your combos. It's not just hack and slash. So okay, I just great. feel like I got like very competent at it like quite quickly. Yeah, right. And it made it feel better. There's also dismemberment in it. Okay, finally. Just like during the game, which yeah, is yeah. great. Some ca- Like a bunch of characters reappear from previous games. I'm not going to spoil anything in particular because there's some things you're like, oh, that's cool that they – Dark they Vader, did. he's in Dark it. Vader turns yeah. up and he goes, hello, I'm Dark Vader. No, Robert Fett, no, he's not, in it. No, we're not – we're not – we're <laughs> – were the Aldi versions uh-huh. yeah, of those right. characters. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Just as good, I think. Yeah. Better value, though. Absolutely. You know? Uh, also, if you like the like the New Republic stuff that they're doing, not New Republic. Luke whatever. Skywanker. <laughs> All of the great characters, you and know? And just like the name implies, yes. You better believe it. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I, 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 as I end up, I, and, and as I understand it, like that kind of parry dodge combat, I think it is just a, it is kind of like a riding a bike situation. Like yeah. once it's once you do it enough, like something clicks and you're just like, oh, I get it. Yeah, and it's obviously like they would have improved it on the previous one, uh-huh. but just all the, I, the everything just felt. And again, it might be just because I've played more games like this, but it felt more intuitive. Like yeah. the um the uh, they they do really interesting stuff with the mechanics of like getting around. I feel uh-huh. like they fine tune that like. A lot, and mm. they do a really good job of building up. Like, okay, this is how you do a double jump. This is how you do a dash. This is how you do a wall run. This is how you do a wall run and a zip. Mm. So, and like, and they, and then it becomes like this really fun kind of mm. balletic. And Cal Kestis has a fantabulous flying machine, of course. He does. Well, sometimes, he, sometimes he does. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> sometimes yeah. he'll grab a bird and will carry him places. <laughs> right. But he still kills a lot of animals. Good. Which I appreciate. Uh, what else? I didn't feel like I put 30 hours into it. Interesting. Like, and I did it slowly. Like, I didn't do it over, like, mm. you know, I, I chipped you, it away. It wasn't one it. sesh. No, I did, like, an hour a night or whatever. You didn't maybe. lock the door and you're like, kids, fend for yourself. <laughs> yeah. But um, I also think that one thing I maybe didn't like, there were a couple of boss battles where it's like, God, this just spiked. Oh, yeah, right. Difficulty, uh-huh. like, big time. Like, uh-huh. and maybe that, maybe I just need to, to get better. And it's something that, like, you know, you do well, get I mean, better traditionally, you got to get good. You got to get you? better and get good and what? Mm, that's right. Killing stormtroopers, like you go into when you go into an area and there's like thirty stormtroopers, you're like terrific. Yeah, right. And then you, you know, and 
kill as many as you can as fast as you that's can right. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and it rewards you for doing so. That's thirty families that yeah. don't have a dad anymore. That's you know? right. And that's beautiful, I think. And, and mums. There's some, yeah, some mums in there, that's there. true. I think if there's one game that's gonna maybe get me to buy a PS5. Spider Man? Spider Man or two games then. Spider Man two and Armored Core Six. Oh yeah. So what kind of games are those? I think it's been different over the years. Okay. So I think I I don't Turn based? Well, see, that's the thing. If I were to guess, if you said what's an Armored Core game about, I would have said like turn based strategy. And maybe they were at one yeah. point. But this one is very, this is from From Software, of course. So this is the, the yeah. Bloodborne Souls games. Um, but it is very much like you're in a, you're in a mech. I'm just and a good gameplay. And you're running and you're jumping around enormous structures, sort of Star Wars esque, I think, really, but rustier. Yeah. And sure. you're just firing missiles and lasers and it looks like a heck of a good time. God, this so, does look fun. Yeah, right. I remember these games from like way back. Yeah, on. right. But yeah. you don't remember what they're like. No, right. I definitely played at least one of them. Interesting. Maybe I had a, one on a demo disc. Might have had one on a demo disc. I might have. Yeah. Um. So cool. Anyway, if you get a, if your wife buys you a PlayStation Five, yeah, okay, I'm listening. Then it's um, it's worth doing. every penny. Yeah. Good. But I tell you what, that system, ugly as fuck. It's the mm. ugliest thing PlayStation have ever put out. Wow. It's horrendous. Huh. I know you can change the face plate. Even Crash Bandicoot? <laughs> Uglier than Crash Bandicoot? Well, Crash Bandicoot's probably beautiful to his mother. That's true. But, um, yes, uglier than Crash Bandicoot. Are you saying the PS5 isn't ugly? Is ugly towards its mother, the PlayStation 4? Yes. Wow. Also, you can play PlayStation 4 games on it. Nice. Which perfect. Is terrific. That's great. You couldn't do that in the previous That's true. generation one. So, yeah. It's cool, man. It is cool. It's a cool game. Sounds cool. And they're, they're probably going to do, it looks like they're going to do one more. And the stuff that you set up, you're like, oh, interesting. Okay, I'll play another one of these. And I will. That's right. You've got to defeat that Dark Vader. I will get him this time. I'll get. He doesn't even have the force. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He's got some forks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that Just throwing them. Stop it. Yeah, that was when the difficulty spiked. Yeah, wasn't yeah, ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't think he'd have so many forks. I didn't think so either. Yeah. Should we move it along? Yeah, to letters. Yeah. I'll play the letters then. Whoa. The classic one was Letters, oh letters, we love you Some letters, they're only a day away We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters We are going to do letters We are, because this is the segment of the show where we do letters And if you don't reach the show, you can hashtag Weekly Planet Pod mm. on Twitter That's or right. X or whatever you want to call it Oh, sex um, now, isn't it? Yeah, uh, who cares? Or you can email in at weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com or, or you can wait until Claire does a European tour yep. and you can physically hand her a letter. That's right. That we have one, and we have one right here. But that didn't happen. Or may happen, but she didn't return it to us. No, we do have one letter, don't we? That's right. I'm you know how many letters Claire's going to get next time? <laughs> get so many letters. This is our second letter. We got one from Phil. That's right. We got one from... Oh, Aaron. Aaron. There we go. I was almost like, I don't think he left a name. <laughs> With the anonymous letter guy. <laughs> Dear James and Mason, I hope Hello. this real-life letter finds you well. It does. It did. I uh, don't have any interesting story to share, but I wanted to say thank you for the content you both put out. Whoa, that's we us. Do. That is it. Uh, August last year was the most challenging month of my life, and although you were on a break then, I signed up <laughs> to a big sandwich shortly after as a way to help with my mental health. I've now listened to everything up there currently, Damn. working through Suggestible now. We'll follow up with taunts. And total something like 18 plus days. Oh my God. Instead of driving me mad, I'm happy to report I'm in a much better and healthier headspace. Your stupid sense of humor <laughs> is in line with my own. And your podcast bring me much comfort. Thanks to Claire for providing a way to getting this to you. That's from Aaron, PTO. My <clears> goodness, <throat> here we go. P.S. My handwriting may look like a child's, but I am 31. I was just going to say that handwriting is pretty good. Yeah, right? Compared to ours. Very readable. Yeah, ve- that legible is what you want. Readable. Very readable. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, that's right. What a kind thing to send and say. And we're glad that you're doing better. And thank you for, uh, I guess, us making you buy that thing when we went on break. That's right. Uh, our, us going on break happened to coincide with the dark place in your life, which that's led right. you to spend money on us. And we're sorry about that. That's true. But it was only $9. <laughs> US dollars. Exchange rate. That's right. Et cetera. Yeah. But no, that's awesome. Thank you that's so right. much. I mean, that's you obviously went out of your way to do that. That's right. To do a physical letter. We, yeah. And we really appreciate that. We and thank you for coming to Claire's uh, live yeah, show. Yeah, show as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So cool, Mason. Very cool. What else have we got here? What do you have there? I've got a tweet here from <laughs> Russell Mitchell's The Tall Man. Oh, yes. Momo Taras Jinzo. Okay. It says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. You, you could answer this. Have you ever watched the watched Bosch? Bosch. No, I've never watched Bosch. Me neither. All I know is it's got 
well, if it's had seven seasons on Prime Video with a sequel series on Freeview, Freeview that's been greenlit for a third season before the second season even comes out as the best show in the streaming era. Bold to say, but true. All I know about Bosch is... Bosch. My understanding of Bosch is that they changed the name of Bosch so they wouldn't have to pay additional residuals. Bosch Origins. Bosch Origins, yeah. yeah that's right, yeah. Well, maybe it's good, though. Borscht to be wild. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, no, I've heard good things about Borscht. Yeah, besides that thing. Yeah, besides that thing. But that's not Borscht's fault. No, it's not Borscht's fault. Yeah. If anything, Borscht is the victim there. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. God damn. Yeah. That's crazy. You yeah. got a letter, Mason? Uh, I mean, this you had one's a letter. Jerry. Yeah. So Twisted Metal is good. I know I didn't I expect it either, right, yeah. but this show is good. Just give it a chance. Yeah, maybe we will. I've it's, heard out, that. it's out now, actually. I've heard that. Good, good Omens is all that, also out, so I'll oh, watch this, that first. Okay, boy. TV is the new movies, isn't it? Yep. Except for Marvel TV, <laughs> which is worse. Which is less than a movie and a TV show. That's right. Even though it's longer than <laughs> both. What's going on there? This is a this is maybe more of a personal one directed at me, Mason. Okay. It's from Eli, who says, right. "What's your current squat PR, and what are you working towards?" Hundred. Uh, yeah. So I can. What did I get to? I got like ninety five. Oh. But I could have done more. Well, I, don't, I did like, hundred, as I mentioned. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I did. I did ninety five a hundred times though. Huh. 95 kilo, I should okay, say. Right. I weigh like 70. I mm. weigh. I'm like. I weigh as much as a baby bird. Okay, but so you want to you want to lift more. You want to you want to lift more than not you, necessarily, you weigh. but okay. it's like quite a bit lower than what I have been able to do in the past. But because I was doing F45, they don't really do big heavy squats as much. But they've kind of pivoted into this kind of thing. Uh-huh. But also, when I was trying to find my one rep max, Mason, uh-huh. the guy I was with was a hundred years old, and I was like, <laughs> I don't trust this guy if I push myself. To, to like to help me out of this, right? He, you you don't want him as your spotter, <laughs> yeah, because you might you might drop a big barbell on your neck. So I think you'll be like, I don't know what to I, do. I think I could have done maybe a hundred and five. I'll maybe. turn the blitz alarm. <laughs> yeah. I'll switch it on. Yeah. Anyway, I'd love to get to I don't know 110, 120 maybe. Yeah, yeah. But just yeah. to just to be a just to be keep moving. You know what I mean? Mm, I'm also yeah. working on my depth. You know what? I want to make sure my depth is in check. Uh, sure, absolutely. You, know? you don't want to be. You don't want to be in your. You know, in your seventies, and your depth hasn't been checked. Exactly. You know? Also, I hate lower body. I want to be doing upper body all. That's day. why everybody skips leg day, as far <laughs> as I can tell. But I don't, Mason. I well, do it, and I hate it. That's great. Yeah. Anyway, wow. that's where I'm at. I know a lot of people listening will be like, "That's not enough weight. You suck." Mm. But maybe I do. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Oh, here's one more email. This is from Nick from Nevada. Oh yeah. Hey, James and Mason, big fan, big time fan, long time listener. I was wondering if you had any wise advice on what to say to people on their phones in the theatre. Speaking of people on their phones in the theatre. Yeah. That's what's happening here. Oh, my God. Uh, More specifically, during my screening of Oppenheimer, the man in front of me was watching a baseball game on his phone with full brightness and drinking whiskey. Right after the test bomb dropped, instead of sitting with that moment, all I could think about was how could a game that went scoreless for five innings could be more interesting than the movie I paid $22 to go see. The only solution I thought of about two hours in the movie was to whisper loud enough so that his family was embarrassed and told him to turn down his brightness, which he ignored. Any suggestions would be greatly he ignored. appreciated. Yeah, yeah. What is he even doing? I don't know. What kind of fucking psycho yeah. is this? Well, see, that's the thing. My my advice would be don't worry about it. Yeah. Because they might stab you. Yeah. You know? That person is doing that because they have no empathy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've seen Twitter. In the last week, I've seen a bunch of stuff on Twitter like – just people, it's often videos. I saw a video of a, a woman who brought their child to Barbie and the child wasn't interested in Barbie, so the child just had an iPad going. Yeah. And then another woman confronted this person and then uh, the mother just shoved the woman. That she, there, was, there, was a, there was a physical altercation. Stuff going and, on. like, yeah, I think, I, I think it's maybe like a, like a lockdown thing. Yeah. Like people have lost their ability to – I think people might at some point regain this, but I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Um, but I would recommend – uh, just tune it out. Tune it out, yeah. Yeah, because uh, – Unfortunately. Yeah, you could get stabbed. Yeah. Oh, don't, you don't want that. But also – Yeah. What if you win a fight and you look cool? Oh, that's true. <laughs> that is true. What if you're a hero and everybody claps? And you can email in and tell us that you you said that and you, yeah. you, you won. Also, often cool. people like that, like they're looking for a confrontation. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like either they don't care or they're very happy to like – yeah. Because what are they doing? That's Why would true. you? Well, I saw that, like, there was a guy in front of me who, after the bomb went off, who was talked about this last week, was playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> and I don't think that was like, I don't know. I, I, I think that was just, I don't think he was doing it intentionally. I think he was just addicted to Pokemon yeah, Go. Yeah, it seems that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. But again, it was that thing of you. I was just like, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, I think I think there was a, the, one of the kids in front of me uh, when I was watching uh, Talk to the Hand. Yeah, because uh, the ghosts aren't listening. Um, he was just like ordering a supermarket order. I think <laughs> he just went to the Coles website. He's like, oh, oh buy yeah. some stuff for tomorrow. Or whatever. Why not? Yeah. yeah. God. Yeah. Wow. I think maybe it is lockdown, but also like. Let's be real. It's never been great, has it? No, that's true. Which is why I don't know if you've seen with the, like that Sound of Freedom movie, mm-hmm. um, which I would love to talk about at some point. It's not out here. No, uh, <laughs> it will be soon. Will it? Because um, it's coming out of Dendi because Dendi is owned by Icon Distribution and Icon Distribution is owned by one man, Australia's own, real cool guy, Mel Gibson. <laughs> gives okay. it, so. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that so. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But basically, like, people are talking about their cinema experiences. And this, oh. I guess, is unrelated to people acting poorly. It's like, yeah, my, my seat was bad and the air con was off and they didn't close the door at the start and the lights were on. It must and the, be a conspiracy. The movie had no sound. It's like, have you ever been to a movie? Right. Yeah. That's like every second time I go, it's that. Yeah, sometimes. Because you... it's run by teenagers and they don't care because they're not paid properly. That's and right. Like, and honestly, like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. Like, whatever. Sometimes you go to the movie and just the lights stay on the first 20 minutes. Yep. And maybe somebody, maybe you go out and check or you ask somebody and yeah. maybe you if don't. I'm, if I'm near last in, yeah. I'll I'll kick the door shut. Yeah, right. Like, you know, and then when I, and on the way out, I open it and I put the little thing down. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, when, I, when I leave, I go, every man for himself and I run. <laughs> ah! Yeah, cinemas are cool, man. They are very But anyway, cool. we also have the luxury of going... And like the best times. That's true. It, both of us yeah. can just go like middle of the day when there's nobody yeah. else there. So. Well, I've talked about this before as well because I, I see a lot of kids' movies with my kids. Uh-huh. And that like I don't care at all. That mm. Like if there's kids running around, I'm oh, like, that's they're true, kids, yeah. who gives a shit? Mm. I had a, we were watching Elemental and there were just kids like doing laps. And not only that, like running in front of us, like mm. directly in front. One like just like trampled my jacket with sunglasses <laughs> right. in it. Yeah. And I was just like whatever. Yeah. I think that, might, that, that might be good advice actually. If you see somebody, an adult on their phone, just remember that they have a child's brain. Yeah. It's not their fault. And you know? if you win that fight, you'll look cool. That's right. You Someone can email us and tell us you <laughs> won the fight. <laughs> and you were right. Yeah, that's right. Got any more? I've got one more. That's all the emails that have ever been sent to anyone. From Optimus, wow, Optimus Cyclops, who says, hashtag Wiggly Planet Pod. Your review of Mario was spot on. Also, when Mario fought DK, he hit the flower box from the top, so the flower should have dropped from the bottom of the box, but it came out from the top. Literally unwatchable. Absolutely. Amen, brother. Here. You ain't wrong. Yeah. You ain't wrong, brother. (laughs) So that's the show that is the whole show folks thank you so much for listening we absolutely appreciate it thank you for telling your friends about it because that is how we get the new listeners that we appreciate even more and we want new listeners to replace the old listeners that's right we got a lot of drop off so much (laughs) do we I don't know let me check I I have no idea oh it's really bad I just checked you shouldn't have checked (laughs) you shouldn't have checked James we 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 both had the illusion in our heads that this was going really well but it's not it's bad for us uh, and thank you, folks, for leaving a five-star review uh, on any app of your choice. You can do it in app. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, James will find it and he will read it. I out. just checked. There's none, Mason, oh, because no. of the drop-off. Oh, no. No, I got heaps. Uh, here we go. This one is from Alv- Alvis. Elvis Jart 69. Elvis and the Chipmunks. It's A-L. Oh. Alvis. Alvis. And it says five stars. Just in app, like you said, any app. It says, mm. what a duo. Just two great mates. Shooting news up your bottle, butthole, enjoy or don't, I don't care. We don't care either because you gave us five stars. Exactly. We don't care what you do with it. We love it. That's right. And this one's from MI1 Scott who says five stars also, long time listener. Been listening to this pod for almost six years now and I've got to say there's nowhere else I'd rather get red hot comic book movie news shut on my butthole than here with you guys. Themes emerging, isn't there? I did the right thing by changing that theme, Mason. Interesting. If that's what you want to believe. It is what I want to believe there and it's go. true. Folks, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com at Facebook. Going Twitter, on with my internet. Camp. You can go to Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the uh, Weekly Planet Podcast subreddit and Discord. Thank you for uh, to Fidel and uh, and Maisie and Sarabi for doing all sorts of moderation and admining over there as well as other stuff like TikToks Incredible. and videos and all kinds of things. Uh, let's see if you want to uh, follow some people on the socials. I do actually. Uh, you can go and follow our friend Rob Collins. He's at Rob Rob Collins. Rob Collins. Mm-hmm. Like Roald Dahl but with a B. Exactly. Roald Dahl. And not racist. Uh, at Raw Collins on Twitter. Uh, at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. That's where you find all your Weekly Planet news and updates. 
Uh, uh, if you want to follow me, it's Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and Nick Mesa on Instagram. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. Whoa. If you want to support the show, you go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You're chucking a buck there or in a man you would not miss. That is the key. Jack or if back. you're a, a, a big time big spender, bigsandwich.co for nine US dollars per month, bonus podcasts, movie commentaries, early videos, video game let's plays, the whole shebang. Come on, man. Who is this guy? Come on. Oh, he's just a guy who wants your money. Uh, okay. Well, he's saying all the right things. He's very persuasive, I listen think. Listen to him. He knows. I'm inclined to give him all my money. You don't have to. Too bad. <laughs> you made the character too powerful. I'm over my What wall. have I done? That's right. We're going to get too rich and successful, Mason. That's not what I wanted. No. I wanted middling success. Oh, well, too bad. Shouldn't Ever been... since the numbers drop off, I felt a sense of relief. No, no, no. You shouldn't have been such a good actor there and created... <laughs> Just a powerful image of a man who's like, come on, come on. And I didn't even go to acting, big acting school. That is very true. Some people just have got it. That's right. Uh, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Arakam for all our musical themes. Uh, go to tpublic.com and search for the Weekly Planet if you want a tea shirt. That's free. That's right. To search. That's right. That's how they get you. Yeah. Uh, if you want a Weekly Planet uh, T-shirt or mug or pillar or whatever, whatever you want. Whatever happens. And whatever. And we maybe get that money. I should check. I haven't checked in like five years. Oh, yeah. Maybe we're rich. Maybe. Seems unlikely. Seems very Seems, unlikely. But other people make T-shirts and whatever. That's true. We could put up posters. Oh, that's true. I did a gym life poster last week, oh, which I right. very much enjoyed. Yes. Uh, yeah. Anything else? No, that's the whole show. Next week, the Meg 2. Oh, my God. We're back in the Megverse. Double the Meg, double the chum. Triple the Meg. Triple the Meg. Triple the Meg. Wait. The last time there were two, two Megs, so now there's three Megs. Megs. That would be six Meg. So it's they triple the Megs. 50% more than Meg? 50% more Meg. It's a real Meg. Oh, my God. 50% is like flipping a coin. Is that relevant? <laughs> it's not, Jason. No. <laughs> it, is, it is very much no. <laughs> well, so you're trying to flip that underwater. It's not going to work. Uh, grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. They should implement his diving skills. Right? He was an he was Olympic a, diver. Right? Did they even implement any of that? I don't think so. But I think back then he had hair. Yeah. So I think now if he tried to dive... He'd be too streamlined. He'd be killed. He'd crash into the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Clunk. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye.